Welcome back to Odyssey of the Dragon Lords. We made it to session 17, y'all. Strangers from the internet and Bob. Um, in the land of Thylea, there, are, there was a great battle, many battles, 500 years ago between the Titans and the Settler Races, also uh, teamed up with the Dragon Lords. There was an oath, a truce, an oath of peace for 500 years, which is soon ending. Versi, the oracle, has seen uh, the destruction of Thylea and all of its lands and inhabitants, unless the heroes uh, show up to save the land. And she saw you folks as being those said heroes. She gave you a list of great labors to complete, as well as some information about your personal missions in this land and you have been completing those great labors most recently uh the necropolis at telemuk the burial site of the dragon lords themselves um and i will let solano deo take us away and whatever voice he's doing today well couldn't really think of one until now okay Commissioner Gordon, it's me, man, man. <laughs> Hear me out. Commissioner Gordon. Robin and I have been playing Dungeons and Dragons. And I love it. I'm having fun. Anyways. Previously in Odyssey of the Dragon Lords. Our heroes continue to explore Gotham City. Eventually fighting all of the buried Dragon Lords. Then, in an unfortunate happenstance. Catwoman disappears. Ashaya. Only to return. Somehow. In a different costume. They then return to town. To party with Poison Ivy. Only to wake up the day before a coronation. With her missing. <laughs> you must find her. I'm Batman. Uh, so yes, translation. Uh, Poison Ivy is Princess Honora. Honora, yep. Pythor's... Uh, King Pythor's uh, daughter. daughter, who was going to be sacrificed to the Lord of Storms. You guys prevented that sacrifice. Yep. And uh, here we are. You guys have all woken up exhausted. And you find Thanks your... Thanks for the reminder. Yeah, you all have... Um... It's the worst condition to have while you're doing a mostly skill-based session. Yeah, let's start out with a skill check. Why don't everyone give me a, a constitution check? Because he's a psycho and he, he makes some blind rolls. He's a psycho. He's a psycho. Whoa. Whoa. Blind. Yeah, that's... There you go. Oh. Saving, saving throw. Disadvantage. Just constitution ability, yeah. Yeah. Where's the Look at that sweet ten I got. Well, I don't know how Saren didn't get the disadvantage, but either way, yeah, everyone's really low, so you're not quite sure uh, what happened in terms of uh, the events of last night, but you do feel this uh, kind of sinister and um, uh, almost like someone has been playing a, a joke on you. You feel this energy around the whole night as if you were duped. So, if you recall, you had a few things going on. Um, you all woke up in a crazy disheveled room. Um, things are gone. Your weapons are gone. Zark is uh, bare-chested and uh, seems to have oil on him. Um, there's a tattoo on Saren's bicep. Um, I cut it off. <laughs> Shia's... Uh, <laughs> Uh, family medallion is missing, and instead she's got a medallion of Sidon. And just generally, uh, the folks at the palace where you guys are staying in a suite at the palace, uh, they knocked on the door and asked about Queen Honora. They said that uh, the cleaning folks um, had seen you all come in late with a plethora of uh, scrupulous individuals, and uh, didn't seem that... Princess Honora was one of them, and she did not sleep in her bed. Um, Are you saying Princess Honora is scrupulous? She was not with you. I know. You said 
and we came in with a bunch of scrupulous people and she wasn't one of them right just saying kind of implies that she's scrupulous <laughs> Uh, so somebody has a gambling chip, uh, you've got a tattoo, there's a griffin in the water closet, uh, there's statues everywhere, including a very large, uh, statue, I think it was, of Zark, as well as a large phallic, uh, piece of a statue, um, also from Zark, uh, you don't know, yeah, there was a piece, but I threw it away, <laughs> Where's away? I threw out the window. Okay, there is a large phallic piece of a statue outside of, uh, in the courtyard of the uh, palace. It, there's a reason why. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, for some reason, he gave me the junk. <laughs> yep, okay. I remember giving the griffin food or something. Uh, yeah, you might have given it food. It probably ate it heartily. Hmm. Hmm. Does it seem distressed at all? Or are there any like, claw marks on the ground? Like how we got the griffin in there in the first place? Uh, yeah, you do see some claw marks. It doesn't look like they're around the doorway, like you had to push it in or anything. Um, it just looks like kind of like it was maybe bored. It doesn't look like there was a lot of like attack in the scenery um but there's still some claw marks around and it is definitely still standoffish with you all mm. i just try to calm it down at all okay you can roll uh animal handling you son of a bitch it's all a disadvantage it's all a disadvantage y'all did i put a shit or something uh, I think you, uh, are, if you're good. rolling from your token, yeah, you're already exhausted, so it should be automatic. Yep. If this is the best I'm getting. Yeah, so you kind of go up to it, you say there, there, and uh, it's still very standoffish with you. I mean, it's licking its chops, it's not uh, actively growling, but it still doesn't look safe to touch. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Close the door back again. Okay. Close the door to the water closet. You're still in the palace. Uh, it's up to you where you go from here. Hmm. So the last last place we saw her was in the tavern. So I guess we go to the tavern first. Did we check the roof for a bed? Oh, <laughs> sure. Uh, I mean, it's kind of hard to get up on the roof of a palace, but uh, how are you checking? Are you trying to look for like uh, like outside the window to climb up or? Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll see. I mean, he threw the phallic piece of a statue out the window. Did it like go break through a window or? or no, yeah, there's open? yeah, there's like open okay. windows to like a. a uh, it's not a, a balcony, but the windows do open, and there is like a courtyard where um, a lot of the bedrooms to the palace open to. And when he pushed it out, it fell in a big bush. <laughs> this is getting dicey, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so the big stone cock is in the big bush. Wow. Get there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm going to look out said, the window what see I, if there's any you, way that we can get up there. When I instructed you to erect a new statue, this isn't what I meant. <laughs> so yeah, you look uh, at the window, and um, there are, you know, ornamental kind of uh, columns that look possibly climbable. I mean, they do go straight up. They're not, like, easy holds. And you can look around the you can look around the roof of the rest of the courtyard, and the roof looks um, undamaged from what from the angle that you could see. I think we need to get a better viewpoint because I have a feeling I'm not gonna be able to find stuff. Hold on, let me see. Oh, Ashaya, do you have some eyes and ears that could help us out? 
Sure, I don't mind checking. Okay. Are you sending your imp? Uh, no, I will f fly up myself. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, you go out the window. Uh, you fly up, and you get a good view. Just above the courtyard, you could see the bush that was uh, pretty smushed, but still hiding the phallic piece of statue quite well. And from your vantage point, you look at the roof, and you're in the part of the, the palace that has this uh, square courtyard where all the guest rooms are um, off the side of the main kind of palace chamber and throne room, and uh, the roof does not look disturbed. Yeah, there's nothing up here. Oh, no, now that his shy is gone, like, something's wrong, right? Like, we kind of need to figure something out. Solano. Solano just nods. He's too um, mage by the statue. So yeah, I would say we head towards the tavern. That sounds like, like a plan. Theron said. Oh, there's Solano. Okay, you want to head to the Dragon's Tooth, uh, the last place that you guys have memory of. Yeah. Okay. You begin to make your way out of the palace, and um, you see some guards kind of talking, and as you pass the, the main hallway and into one of the, the larger foyer kind of rooms you see that they are having an argument. There are some guards uh, kind of speaking hush-hush and talking to some other guards, and they're by a very large statue of Sidon outside of the um, Order of Sidon kind of section of the palace, and they're kind of trying to cover up the uh, statue, and some of them are speaking in hushed tones. Weird. Couldn't have been anybody. One of them. Are they just being quiet, or are the others talking in not so hushed tones? Uh, there seems to be like two arguing with another two guards, um, and you hear the words, uh, you better find it, and the other one saying, we didn't see anything. We've talked to the, the night shift or the cleaning folks. Nobody saw anything and they seem to be covering up specifically the waist and front of this statue of Sidon. <laughs> the fact that it's Sidon statues peen, that was taken off as funny. <laughs> I mean, we don't know that. We just know that they're covering that area up. Maybe somebody, you know, drew Could something have been someone else's. Or, you know. Could have been a Pythor statue. We could actually go ask them if you want, but I feel like that's going to implicate us in some stuff. So one of them sees you and turns and he says, Ah, oh, you guys look worse for wear. <clears throat> Rough night, huh? Uh, yeah. Uh, Did you have a good night? Because it was rough for me. Actually, it wasn't very rough. It seemed to have gone by so quickly that I barely even remember it. I, uh, the morning's more rough. Yeah, you, you uh, woke me up. It wasn't even my shift, and you had knocked on the, the sleeping quarters for the guards and uh, demanded us retrieve wine from Pythor's storeroom for you and uh, ale. And, of course, you know, I'm used to Pythor, so I brought it to you, but it was unexpected, and... Um, and there's rumor that Princess Honora is missing. You... Really? Yes, really. Are you aware of that? I'm just getting my bearings together right now. Trying to piece together what happened last night. Well, if it's all the same to you, um, maybe keep this on on the hush hush we don't want the citizens becoming alarmed before her coronation if you see her please have her report to the palace and he's going on here you guys are 
Will do. Uh, just palace stuff. Neat. Seems someone has uh, damaged a statue of Lord Sidon. In what way? It's been broken. It's been um, vandalized. And we are hoping to remedy the situation lest we stir up more political conflict between the Order of Sidon and uh, King Pythor, Princess um, herself, soon to be Queen Honora. We would just rather avoid the whole situation. Anything you can do to help? Well, if you see a rather large <laughs> stone cylinder, um, hopefully it's in one piece. Uh, it seems someone has broken off the member of this particular statue. And as you can see, he's a very large statue, and it is quite noticeable that it's gone. Member, like, of the congregation? Uh, his man member. His penis. Oh. Someone that's all. broke off the penis of Lord Sidon. If the Order of Sidon finds out, it's not going to be good. We are telling them that we are polishing the statue and uh, hope that oh. they don't ask too much. <laughs> and if you find this, how are you going to reattach it? Well, we have uh, certain uh, artists, sculptors, um, so Stramos in town, uh, so Stratos in town, he is a growing in fame as a sculptor and he would probably our, be our quickest option to reattach Sidon's cock. I recommend checking nearby some bushes, maybe you'll find it that way. I feel like Sidon would bury his man member in a bush. Maybe it would Sidon himself. You you do know that Sidon's sister wife is his his lover, his Are you accusing Lord Sidon of being promiscuous? I mean there's a lot of bushes around. Hmm. You guys should probably rest up, get some water. That's a good idea. Remember, if you see Princess Honora, send her our way. And what about the giant cock? Send it your way too. Absolutely. <laughs> Preferably um, covered. We'll do. You want us to put like some sort of sheath on it, or we'll just cover it with a cloth. We don't have to make a big deal out of this. Everyone has seen a penis at some point in their life. It's not like you're looking at a unicorn. You're going to stare at it and say, "Oh, I'm looking at this in awe." No, it is literally a carved penis. <laughs> right. We just prefer to be discreet. Um, you know. I mean, that's understandable. We'll cloth it up and throw it in a bag or something. So it won't break anymore. <laughs> and then we'll bring it over. How does that sound? Where can we find you once we have found Sidon statue's detachable penis? Wait, uh, so the bag won't break or so the penis won't break? So the penis won't break. Jesus, Zark. I feel like it's too big, though. It probably wouldn't fit in a bag. Well, you know what? We'll it just is have rather to large. It's it's about the yeah the size of a a child or an elf. Well, that's impressive. That's too big. It's quite the it's statue. I mean, any kind of it is, it is quite a statue. It is quite a statue. You see, it's probably twenty twenty five feet tall. That'll certainly draw a crowd. <laughs> well, you know what? We'll just have to find a big cloth. Thing and cover his thing and then bring you his thing back. Well, where that, that would we, be great. Where, uh, where shall we meet you for delivery of the penis? Oh, please come to uh, Pythor's guards chamber room, not the Lord of Storms, the okay. Order of Sidon's uh, guards. We have separate areas of the palace. So deliver to Sidon's guards Pythor's. room? Pythor's. 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 Okay. <laughs> not Sidon's. <laughs> Just in case. 
Okay, we'll be on the lookout. It certainly won't be hard to miss. Correct. <laughs> I'm trying to keep a straight face while I'm talking about a giant bro removed. And this guy, penis. he seems like he's done this a million times. He's straight face in all business. Yeah, I mean, it's living in a giant city, probably a common happenstance. <laughs> Guys just rip off a giant dog and <laughs> parade around with it or something. And just as he's about to turn, he kind of looks at you and winks while he says, don't look too hard. I look at him and I'm like, hmm. Wait a minute. Okay. Is this thing, is this thing like full on attention or is it like, you know, Can I have a little... insight to see what he's trying to, what he means by that? Uh, sure. You could roll insight. <laughs> Solano's confused right now, so he's gonna try to figure out what, what this, what I know what it means, but Solano doesn't. Oh, this is the weirdest thing I've ever done in D and D. The weird things, man. Yeah, D &D, let me tell you. Solano kind of gets the sense that he is not very good at humor, and that he was trying to make a humorous joke. And also, there's a little touch of um, his dislike for the Order of Sidon in particular. Oh, I, I tell him. Oh, don't worry. That joke landed with a soft delivery. <laughs> And then, because he appreciates it more, because Solano also doesn't like Sidon, because Sidon's a raging tool bag. And, um, then, I guess we'll go look for Sidon's penis. Um, Ashaya, Ashaya, give me a history check. What'd you say? It's the bar, not oh. the penis. <laughs> Oh, Ashaya, you uh, feel your heart race a little bit as you look up at the large statue of Sidon in the foyer. You feel a little jolt of energy down your spine as you shudder and get goosebumps along your arms. Good memory. Okay, you head to the Dragon's Tooth. You make your way around the uh, palace, um, down the slope, into the main part of town. And you find yourselves at the Dragon's Tooth. And um, it's still fairly early. There's a few patrons, and some of them, you know, looking like they maybe didn't even stop drinking, uh, notice you, uh, some old guy with a... A beard, another young farmer looking guy who kind of is still leaning against the bar, sees you and kind of does a half ass like heroes. Uh, and uh, Delphian is out. There's staff cleaning up things, just wiping down tables and kind of preparing for the day. It looks like the place um, had a good time the night before. There's a lot to clean up. Probably ask one of the staff, like, hey, you seen Delphian around at all? Uh, you see a young girl wiping down tables, and I'm probably going to assume that you're going to ask her name. She is called... I'm on a different screen, and so it kind of makes my tables all I weird. Okay. really was not going to ask her name. I don't believe you. Uh, Th <laughs> Zoe is her name, and she says, oh, uh, Delphian, yeah, he's, he's out right now, um, wow, you guys, you guys came through multiple times last night, you just it seemed like every time we thought you were done, uh, we'd start to clean up, and, uh, within another hour or so, you came back, different size group each time, uh, wild, wild night, um, yeah, Delphian's out right now, he's on some personal business. Would you like to join us to go find him? Oh, uh, I've got a lot to clean up here, as you can see. Um, there's a lot to do, and and uh, we've got people to feed, and this place is a mess. Did you guys uh, have, have fun last that? night? I'm not sure. Not sure? Yeah, it was... Did rough. we have fun? It, it sure seemed like it. 
I mean, you started here and uh, you were celebrating uh, the coronation of Princess Honora two days earlier than her coronation, which is great. Um, we're looking forward to Queen Honora. Uh, let's see, other than that, um, after dinner, you guys all headed out. Um, you heard about uh, the uh, wrestling ring over by the Rock of Esther. You guys seemed really excited with that, and that little um, that little uh, goat creature kind of joined you. And she that you sees uh, Saren's arm that's all bloodied, and I guess she doesn't make a comment because you literally cut it off of your arm. Um, do they use oil at this wrestling ring? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's a little underground, but um, it's over by the the Rock of Esther. Um, the the satyr was with you. Uh, he's actually still here. He's uh, in the back, looking pretty hungover. Um, Have you seen a Kira uh, anywhere? Kira, haven't seen Kira. Nope. And when's the last time you saw Nora with us? Oh, I, I'm i sorry, guys. I wasn't really keeping track. You guys were coming and going, different size group each time. I mean, I know that she was having dinner with you guys from the start. I know that for sure. Other than that, I was really trying to keep up with serving drinks. I mean, it went pretty late. I'm, I only got a few hours of sleep. I can't imagine uh, how you guys are up right now. Where's Glorious? Oh, Glorious is in the back. He's um, kind of on a, a little cot. We kind of set him up because he just uh, seemed really tired and was looking worse for wear. I'm going to go find Glorious. Okay. Uh, you go to where uh, she pointed you and kind of in the back in the corner of the kitchen, there's a little cot there and you see um, a pile of clothes and... Uh, and and uh, a satyr that's laying down, covering his eyes. Yeah, I think we're do anything here. Oh no, I'm I'm taking that bed and waking him up. Oh um. Oh hi oh. Hi Zark. Hey, what's the last thing you remember? <laughs> Oh, hold on. It's going to take me a second to wake up. Um, where? Oh, I didn't even make it to my room upstairs. Okay. Um, good morning. Oh, my head hurts. I don't hurts. think you know where you even are. I'm in a kitchen in the palace? Yeah, no. No, a kitchen. A kitchen. I know. I'm in the kitchen at the Dragon's Tooth. Okay. Um, yes, uh, we were, we were having a good time, and is, is Saren with you? <clears throat> I'm going to point over my shoulder. No. Okay, good, I'm, I'm glad Saren's okay. Um, yes, so, yeah, we were, we were partying why here. Why wouldn't Saren be okay? Oh, I, I just, uh, you know... I ended up in the corner of the kitchen in some place, and if I ended up there, and, and I stopped earlier than you guys, you you guys kept going. So uh, here, here's what's coming back to me. Um, okay, so um, I was I was with you, and uh, I think I remember the the wrestling thing. Um, I'm assuming that's why you have the lightning bolts on your face, Zark, because yeah, okay. Um, and then, yep, probably. and, uh, we went to a, a, a place that, that bet drachma and, and cards and such, but I, they, I couldn't get in. Well, I, I could get in, but you guys couldn't get in unless you, uh, get it, You couldn't bring your weapons. And so, uh, you sent me back with all your, I have your weapons up in the room. I, that. I, I didn't quite appreciate how uh, stocked you guys were with your weapons, and uh, I took I, I I was dragging uh, all of your weapons across Astoria 
to keep them safe so you guys could go gamble. Wow, I'm sorry. They were heavy. You feel bad about that. Um, we're gonna we're gonna have to go find your room though. Jeff, out of character, what is this person's name again so I can write it down correctly? Glorious. It? It's uh, I'll put it in chat. Because I've been having to fix so many NPC names in my in my notes. They yeah. all sound insane. Glorious. Yeah, it's like you make a song of these guys and they all sound the same. Um, I would like. Hang on, look, can I check my shirt real quick to see if I have any drachma I can give him? Um, you have, yes, you've got drachma, whatever you have on you in your character sheet. I want to give him 50 drachma for having to deal with all that bullshit. Oh, oh, no, you get, you guys, you took care no. of me all night. Glorious. Okay. We were, we were buffoons last night. Are you familiar with that word? Uh, uh, yeah, yes, I am. Okay. You, you... We, actually, let's take that. I let me let me redact that statement. We were assholes last night. Well, I am assuming we are, but as that old saying goes, never assume it makes an ass out of you and me. I would like to offer you fifty drachma for helping carry our weapons around because that didn't sound like fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's okay. And, and you came back later, and each time you came back, you were more drunk. Um, oh my God. But I have your weapons, so you guys get all your weapons. They're in the room upstairs, and um, I'm just glad everyone's safe. Um, I'm assuming um, Kira and Anora, everyone's okay? Yeah. Yes. Funny story about that. We don't know where those two are at all. Oh, okay. I guess that, that kind of makes sense. The last time you came through, they weren't with you. Well, uh, tell you what, when you run into them, um, you know, come back here. This place will be cleaned up. We'll, we'll have a, a late brunch, and, um, and we'll all be laughing about this, right? I'm just going to go get my weapons. Oh, S <laughs> Saren, your arm. Hmm. I think I have a memory of someone drawing my face on your arm when you came in once. It's gone now. Oh. It doesn't matter. I thought it looked quite like me. Yeah, but I don't want your face following me around. Oh. Okay. Would it, would, would it be okay if I got a tattoo of your face on my arm? That's a bit too far, buddy. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so he leads you upstairs to his bedroom. Uh, his quarters and he's got a pile of weapons that uh, all seem fine um, obviously they were dragged in the dirt a bit so um, you know the tips have maybe some muck on them but other than that you get all your gear back dust off my family amulet um, I'm not sure if that was with it, it. yeah that's not a weapon that's not a let weapon. me see if I can find uh... it's an item it is an item. Um, let's see. <laughs> I kind of drunkenly tossed it at a random guy. Okay. Um, it looks like. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's not in the pile. That's perfect then. <laughs> But I have another uh, amulet on it, and I have a sight on one. You do. The golden or something? I remember I put it had monetary value or something on it. Yeah, um, the one that's around your neck right now since you woke yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah, that is. I need to look at that one. Sure. Um. Uh, a jewel encrusted medallion of Sidon instead of your locket. And you also have a uh, token, token um, clay token with the 500 drachma embossed on the front and the back in gold script. And it says the Grinning Djinn. Were you going to do something with your Sidon emblem? I was going to keep it on. I was going to take it off. Okay, cool. Uh, so he tells you to come back for brunch. Um, and... Uh, he doesn't seem concerned about 
Tira and Anora. Oh, where else do we have to check? We have this fighting thing we found out about by the rock. Yeah, I'd say uh, all signs point to Fight Club. Okay. I'm going to bring you into the Astoria map here. Uh, let me know if your token's not on the map, and I will add it. Oh, look, it's old me. It's old you. Trash old Ashaya. We don't need her. She is dead. Okay, there you go. What? Hmm? Huh? So, uh, where did my music go? So you make your way through town, and... Um, yeah, the town's kind of waking up a little bit, and you see some merchants setting up their uh, shops, and uh, yeah, things are picking up a little bit. Um, I don't know which uh, music I want to play. Let's go with uh, this one. Okay. And you make your way to the Rock of Esther, the place where you had uh, defeated some basilisks. Yep. And saved Princess Honora from her fate of being sacrificed to the Lord of Storms. And let's see, the Rock of Esther. Okay. Um, so, what is in the Rock of Esther? Do, 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 do. Um, yeah, you go to the Rock of Esther, and it looks to be like uh, the rock and the river. Uh, nothing else seems to be amiss. So you should try and look around for any signs of uh, oil. Any hints of an underground area? Um, let's see. So you see that uh, there is a few large men that are camping on the beach. And as you walk up to them... Uh, they turn to you, and one of them locks eyes with you, Zark, and says, Aha! Greased lightning! And uh, they all start to cheer, even though they look a little bit tired, and they say, Greased lightning has returned! Welcome back, Greased lightning! Oh, no. Greased lightning has currently left the building. <laughs> <laughs> we'll return eventually. <laughs> And he's referring to, they're referring to Zark as Grease Lightning, right? They are referring between, to Zark as Grease Between the lightning bolt I'm and never, me being I'm Grease. I'm never going to call Zark Zark anymore. <laughs> That's incredible. You um, were amazing. I made so much drachma from you last night. Do you care to do it again tonight? Of course. Ah, yes. Where, where are we meeting tonight? Where are we meeting tonight? Of course, we, we meet here. We meet here and we have sand wrestling on the, the Rock of Esther with grease and oil. It's, it's, uh, it's underground. It's not exactly advertised. Okay. What, uh, uh, can, can you tell me who I came here with or who I left with? Well, uh, you came a large group of people, and uh, you were ready to wrestle. It was wonderful, and uh, let's see. Uh, and he starts talking to the other guys around the campfire, and you hear one of them go, Ah, uh, uh, Bobocles, Bobocles, you left with Bobocles for sure. Uh, let's see, um, you had uh, some, you had you, you guys were with you, and um, you had... Uh, that uh, poet who's awful and thinks that she's a god, she was with you. Um, let's see. Ah, Princess Honora was with you. Yes, yes. Yeah. Did she leave with us? Do you remember? Uh, hard to say. Um, she's, she's not here. I would imagine that she left sometime. I don't know if she left with you. And what about the poet lady? 
Oh yes, yeah. I, again, I, we were cheersing. Everyone wanted you to stay, and I, my eyes were on you, Grease Lightning, the reigning champ. You took down the the guy who's been uh, running the show for so long. He's getting cocky, in my opinion. But no one could defeat him until you showed up. I believe uh, you guys. Let's see, what were you talking about? You were going to go. Uh, uh, I think you, you and Bobocles, you guys became uh, good friends, and, uh, I believe you were trying to go gamble. Are you gambling here? No, no well, I, I mean, of course, there's some gambling and wrestling, but, but not the kind of money that happens at the Grinning Gin. I see. You guys said something about See. making big drachma, lots of drachma to, to something about a forge and Vulcan, and I wasn't really paying attention, but you wanted lots of money. Yeah, well, I think uh, we do it again tonight. Ah, Everybody yes. Everybody with me? I don't know if anyone will stand up to you tonight, but I will ask around to see if anyone wants to try to fight Greased Lightning. Well, you come find me. If they, otherwise, I'm not coming back. If nobody's going to fight me, what's the point of coming back? So if you oh. find someone, All right. you come find me. I will ask around. Yeah. Greased Lightning. <laughs> In the meantime. I'm a little hazy on how to get to the smiling gin and uh, the grinning gin. Yeah, the, the smiling genie. Yes, the grinning gin. It's uh, let's see, the grinning gin. If you head into town, uh, you ask it around. Many people know about the grinning gin. Um, I don't know if I have a actual location, but uh, it's so I have too many people. You know, I don't want everybody involved in what we were doing last night sure yes he tells you that the grinning gin is in the um wealthier side of town and it looks more like a um kind of like a general entertainment kind of shop uh they have a spot in the back that goes downstairs that's a kind of a underground gambling arena everyone knows about it even though it's not exactly advertised Mm -hmm. Off to the smiling genie, everybody. Yep, sounds good. Yes. Okay. You make your way through town once again, and uh, you're in the uh, the more sophisticated part of town. And before you, uh, you're kind of walking the streets looking for this uh, shop. And before you go inside, you see Aristodemos approaching you. Um, let's see if I can find him in, in game. Do you remember him? Yep. Lightly. <laughs> oh, I don't have him on my actor sheet. But anyway, Aristodemos shows up. And he looks angry. He walks right up to you. He's got an entourage of guards, and he is furious. He says, you are pathetic. How dare you do the horrific things you did last night? I don't know what you've done to my wife or the things that you stole from me, but I know you did, and I will find out. I have friends in high places. I, I'm on first-name terms with the king, Pythor, and, of course, young Princess Enora. She looks up to me. I will have you exiled from Astoria for this outrage. And he storms off before even questioning or answering anything for you. And the guards kind of look a little bit wide-eyed. And uh... Who was that guy? Who was that guy? <laughs> Good. Good. See you. I uh, hope to see you again. I have a feeling we will. So if you don't recall, Aristodemos... Aristodemos wanted to open the zoo. Open. Yes. Yeah, but it's, but you also yeah, he wanted to open the zoo and his wife kept hitting on me. <laughs> Is that why you're the wife's missing? That's why I remember. Did you and there's a reason why there's a griffin yeah. in the bathroom. Did Solano wake up with her bra? Was that her bra? <laughs> oh my god. 
Yeah, it's like you guys get on. Man, you, went, you went you went on a journey on your own. You stole a griffin and you stole the bra. And wow. So my she guy just, attacks. Solano, He's... remember me by my bra. And I'm like, <laughs> all right, sure. Got why you. Why did I get this short end of the stick? Why did I get the short end of the stick? I got a penis and his tattoo. And a cool side on amulet. That's worth <laughs> money. This um, is like this is like an X-rated version of the Hangover. <laughs> it's really spicy. You don't think all, that the Hangover was X-rated? <laughs> I guess it was. Yeah, it was X-rated. Oh, well, I mean, I mean, we're talking about like a giant, like couple feet long penis off of a statue. <laughs> you don't think okay. they would do that? <laughs> size of a child. The size of a child. So like well, two, th two, three feet. Like batter a man with that thing. Well, it's like we a saw, horse. We saw, Bludgeoning uh, weapon. There's like a giraffe that got decapitated, so that's good. That's close oh enough. my god. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, Sorry, children, if you're watching. <laughs> I know <laughs> children watching. I mark every time on YouTube, not made for children. Good job. <laughs> Okay. Do you go into the gambling den, the grinning gin? Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's see. Uh, you come in, and uh, there's a, a man standing there, and he says, Ah, oh, welcome. Oh, oh, welcome back. Um, what are you doing back? Oh. Uh, questions about, um, last night. Okay, uh, well, um, sure, anything, uh... Uh, what's this weird token thing I have? Um, that is, uh, token f for the Grinning Gin. It's worth 500 drachma. I can exchange it for money? Oh, absolutely. And he holds out his hand. Perfect, I give it to him. Yeah, you guys uh, made out quite quite a ways last night. You you really pissed off a very powerful man in town. Mm. Would that be Aristodemos? Ah, yes, you'd remember. Oh, it was epic. I, I, Why I, was he mad at us? Can you refresh my memory, please, and thank you? Oh, of course. It is an epic tale. I've already told three Here people go, this boys. morning. Hey, okay, so you turned up last night. You were invited to the high stakes table by Aristodemos. Oh my god. And you didn't have very much money to play in the high stakes table, but you bought in using a strange looking necklace. And uh, you, and he points to Ashaya. Yes, your necklace. And you sat at the table, and uh, Ash Ashaya, you kept going all in. The crowd was going crazy, like Ashaya, Ashaya. And, and you, you kept winning. Uh, it was amazing. And Aristodemos, he started, uh, you know, laughing it off and acting friendly. But then uh, the more money he lost, he became quite sour. Oh, my God. He began to get very upset with you and uh, with you, Ashaya, in particular, calling you a cheat. And uh, eventually, uh, Saren, you, yes, you were... Uh, telling and, and egging them on to up the ante and Ashaya you said something amazing I had never seen it in all of my years at the Grinning Gin you, you bet your life against everything Aristodemos had on, on him everything on the next roll your life I could not believe it I was Stunned. Uh, I, of course, I told them, well, no, there's not going to be any dead bodies in a grinning gin, but you agreed that the next roll was based on your life, and you won. Aristodemos, he got furious. He blew up. He was screaming that you were cheating and that he'd get you back. And then as he was about to leave after you had wiped him out of all of the drachma, Saren, you stopped him and you said that the bet was for everything he had on him. And you made him strip his clothes off right then and there. Uh, all of his chips, all of his clothes. And you left wow. him naked, stark as the day he was born, in the grinning gin, shamed and embarrassed. Did he have a griffin on him? Uh, I know he has a griffin, but he did not... No, there's no griffins allowed in the grinning gin. 
Yeah, he didn't like stable it outside or anything like that. Like, oh no, he's just a, just a quick question. I wasn't sure if we owed a Griffin or something. <laughs> No, no, no. There was no griffin in the bet, but, uh, oh, I tell you, there was a lot of money that I seen on the table at perhaps 20,000 drachma. And he gave me, um, everything he had, right? Oh, he gave you everything he had, and his clothes and everything. He was very, give very ashamed. House. Oh, everything he had on him. Oh, okay. Yep. Well, um, can you tell us anything else about who else was with us, besides us four? Oh, I, uh, I mean, there was a, a bard with you, the poet, the one who thinks that she's a god. She was playing some music in the corner, and I remember her kind of snickering at you, and you, you and her particularly, Ashaya, seemed to have some sort of secret language as you winked and smiled back at each other. Yeah, that kind of mm. sounds like what you what you were doing. Yeah, she she was helping me cheat, <laughs> some way or another. <laughs> it was like, yeah, it's, it's like. Uh, know, did she say where she was going at all? Oh, can. I I believe that you left with her, but she came with you. Nope. Oh. Well, it was very exciting. Most people were. Um, pretty caught up in the moment. We don't see stuff like that in Astoria, and it's... Frankly, don't tell him I said that, but it's good to see Aristodemos taken down a notch. Yeah, uh, the funny thing about Aristodemos, um... He's like an, uh, an unwatched tea kettle that's, like, set in the fires of hell. And he tends to get upset over nothing. And at the smallest thing. Uh, so I am very glad we put him in check. Like, we put him below check. We, like, buried his ass. Yeah, 20,000 drachma. I mean, I would see anyone getting upset about 20,000 well, drachma. Well, he's going to have to wait to open up his petting zoo then. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, I thanks for the help. The first one is, was Baba Ganoush with us? What is a Baba Ganoush? Baba, 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 something or other. Baba, I don't remember oh, the last name. Oh, you deadpan just called him <laughs> Baba Uh, let's see. So weird. Baba D. Uh, Hit show Dragon Ball. Yes, the. Oh, um, there was, uh. I, I don't know his name, but I think it started with the B. And, uh, he was, uh. A little, little guy with you. I don't remember his name. We're going to call him Bill. Baba Ganoush looks delicious, by the way. <laughs> it's a Lebanese dish. Consisting of mashed eggplant, olive oil, lemon juice, seasonings, and sometimes tahini. Boba cleese. Oh, tahini. Boba cleese. Boba cleese. Yeah, like Boba cleese. Boba tea. Uh, yes, so. he, he was here and... You uh, had him on your shoulder, Zark, and you kept saying, Ah, lucky charm, lucky charm. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I'm, yeah. did, did he leave with us too? Ah, yes, yes, I, I believe he did. Yeah. He never left your shoulder. At some point he did. Well, clearly. <laughs> um, and, and yeah. I'll I'll sidebar with the Shia later, but yeah. You'll do what? This dude. Sidebar with the Shia. Oh. I want to know where twenty thousand freaking drachma went. Well, I don't want to wait for my five hundred that I get from a little token thing. Did you actually give me five hundred? Yep, you could add that to your sheet. <laughs> oh, nice. You you walked away with apparently twenty thousand drachma. Yeah, that's not in your pockets or in your gear at all. That's what I wanted to ask her, is if she has any recollection of that, or has it on her. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would remember where I put it all. Okay. So it's not on you? Nope, not on me. Ashai, go ahead and give me a... I want to lean towards history. Yeah, history check. What's your sounds about right? Solid history. 
Wow, with disadvantage. Um, you remember some sort of exchange of drachma with Delphian from the Dragon's Tooth. Oh, that's probably how we paid for all the drinks. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, I don't know if he's got any left, but... Did you yep. buy the Dragon's Tooth? <laughs> I hope not. I probably helped him pay for something. Oh, maybe he had what a dead. Mean, you of hope stuff. not. That'd be awesome if you bought the dragons. Do you have a dead? I have something in my notes. I remember he had a dead of some sort. Where did that? Delphian did. I don't Delphian remember what the debt was. I don't remember what the debt was for though. Maybe I paid that off. Oh. Well, okay. Maybe the money went somewhere good to drinks. So I got we gotta find Baba Ganoush, and we gotta figure out what happened to. Oh, I feel like we can like guess where like everything else is. I feel like Kira, in a drunken state, would go to some random ass stage area. Oh my god. Probably back at Pythors. She'd be like, who wants to hear a song? <laughs> I know oh, all of them. That never... sounds like Dragon 2 karaoke. We've never been here before, have we? The, to, to where? The amphitheater? No, I don't like think we've ever gone there. That's a performing place, right? The amphitheater? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Man, I'm really glad we fucked up first the table. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a dick. He lost to me in blackjack. Dude, you only say that because you were trying to sleep with his wife. I was not. She was coming on the salon. We don't know that information. Had white stains. It could have been from anything. I had white stains too. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it could have been anything. We don't know. It could have been the man. The man. Been a white slime. Wait, before before we leave this, uh, shining genie. Um, grinning gin. The grinning gin. I know. Um, uh, I do want to ask him if Aristodemus' wife was here. We asked that already. Aristo no, he only asked about the griffin. Yeah. What do you mean? Aristodemos was here. I just told you the whole story. Right. No, his wife. Oh. Oh, yes. I... Um, let me see if I recall. I think that she was here for part of the night, and then when he became upset, she left. <laughs> wow. Was I... Did, I didn't leave with her, did I? I do not know. Oh, I'm just Shia gonna assume I did, did not win her. <laughs> you what? Did Ashaya win her or not? Oh my god. No. <laughs> like claw machine. We are still <laughs> sophisticated that wives are not property. Okay, right. Perfect. I wanna go find not really Kira. Sure. Yeah. But I wanna try and look for that amphitheater place, because we never been there. I yeah, feel like we, Kira, being dumb, will go and perform at a place like that. Yeah, and we, we also have to find a leprechaun. That is true. So we go amphitheater and then palace? Yeah. Let's, let's see amphitheater. See if there's anything going on. There. Okay. As you head out of the Grinning Gin, uh, there are uh, there's a valet that stops you. And he says, please, uh, heroes of the prophecy... Um, you need to pay for your wagon that has been here all night. How much is that? It is five silver. Or five, uh, no. lepta. Lepta. Sure. Okay. Five lepta. So you hand him five lepta, and his uh, friend goes around to the stables and pulls out a... Wagon, uh, let's see. <laughs> um, it is a city guard wagon that they pull out, and it has a single horse drawn city guard wagon. And they uh, kind of nod to you and they go back into the grinning gin. You are standing on the street with a city guard wagon, and everyone roll perception.
Wow, Zark. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So Zark, your head just hurts. You don't really hear anything. Um, <laughs> but Ashaya. These bells. These bells. Did we get one from Saren? Did we? No, I don't see Saren's perception check. Are you with us, Saren? Yep, I'm here. Okay. Saren's like, are we back to D&D &D yet? No, <laughs> it's like I'm just listening sometimes. Okay, I need uh, a perception check. Okay. We're on one big acid trip. We'll end hopefully Whoa, soon. what's going on here? Um, so... Okay, so the only one that hears it is Ashaya. Ashaya, as they bring out the wagon and the guys leave, and these guys are just kind of wide-eyed at looking at the, um, the city watch wagon, you hear uh, a little bit of a banging and struggling from the rear compartment. Sorry, Shut go up! up. There is a potential that Kira is in here. What? I'm going to open it. No, I'm not opening or it. Or the leprechaun. I mean, it's sm how small is it? How small the is it? Uh, it's it's pretty small. I mean, if it was Kira in there, you would think that she'd have to break a bone to fit or something. <laughs> yeah, that's probably oh small. It's probably a small so, man. So it's the leprechaun. Yeah, I'm just gonna just open it. Saren's gonna open it. Saren, you open it. I swear, if it's a midget in there. Saren, you <laughs> brave man. Jump it on your face. He's so your it's face. a leprechaun. <laughs> Oh, good morning, Iron. I'll talk the morning to you. Saren, give me a, a dexterity saving throw. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the good thing I'm at, but you gave me disadvantage. Dungeons and Dragons is fun, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. so you open the box and out jumps a completely naked, oiled up little uh, <laughs> creature. Oh um, my god. A, a dwarf. And once the box is open, <laughs> he goes to punch you right in the crotch, but you end up being your little rogue self. You dodge it, and he starts to run away. Catch oh my that. god. Does anyone, does anyone have a net? <laughs> Okay, what can I catch him with? I'm trying to imagine what this looks like, and I don't want to. <laughs> it's just like, it's just a black screen. Yeah. Uh, I just imagine him jumping out and, like, blurring out his goods. Yeah, it's it's, it's just, uh, digitally blurred, and as he runs away, you see his little dwarf ass off running. <laughs> after that... Oh, I'm, I'm chasing after him, first off. You chase after him? I'm... Yeah, I'm all oiled up too, so this is not gonna end well. Um, <laughs> okay, down. you just want to also just yeah. Just I got think 50 back feet. to a little Chinese guy jumping out of a back end of a car. Yeah, exactly it's a... what it probably looks like. No, um, I literally called it. Yeah, but like, yes. I, got, I got 50 feet of rope. I think I can eventually catch him. Um, oops, I didn't mean to be Kira, but that's all right. Uh, yeah. Uh, Zark, go ahead and give me a, like, athletics check. Oh, man. Does he have a disadvantage? Because I feel like he should. I don't know. He's naked and he's rolling around. Uh, yeah, so you, you, you're able to close the gap fairly quickly, and you just kind of pounce on him, and now you have in your arms a naked, oiled dwarf. Uh, I'm just going to get the rope and just tie him up before he does anything. So he's screaming at you. He's like, let me go. Let me go, Zark. Well, I'm just trying to figure out what happened last night. Yeah, why are you uh, making before... it? Somebody else, not me, stuffed you in the back of this, you know. I hate you, Grease Lightning. I'm not your lucky charm anymore. So why exactly were you crammed in there naked, greased up? Fine, fine. Get off of me. And, and he, you see him kind of calm down. You feel his body soften. And he says, get off of me. I'll, I'll talk. Yeah, I I'll offer like, him I'll some, like, push him away covering. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just throw like a cl just some spare cloth around somewhere. Nice towel. Yeah. So once he calms down a little bit, you guys uh, come around to the cart and you talk to him more calmly. And he says, uh, "Okay, I was challenged to wrestle you 
at the Rock of Esther last night, Zark, a.k.a. Grease Lightning. You obviously won, just like you did again. And uh, you brought me along with you. You were feeding me drinks, uh, far too many shots of fortified wine. Let's see. We, we came here to the, the Grinning Gin. You uh, said I was your lucky mascot and humiliated uh, that rich snob Aristodemos. Uh, we parted for a while. Um, Y'all came across this police wagon. You decided that you needed to keep it uh, and keep me for future luck, and, and you locked me inside. Um, right before you, you kind of sealed the lock, I heard you say you were heading to the Agora. But I'm, I'm done with you guys. That was, that was a heck of a night. I, I don't want to go with you anymore. I'm not your lucky charm anymore. I want to go back to my, my people on the beach by the Rock of Esther. I need some water and some food. I, I'm done. Please, please let me go. Okay, to be fair, they weren't sober when all of this was happening. Neither was I, but I didn't act like an asshole and keep someone locked in a box. To be fair, oh. I, I didn't put you in that box. Zark did. <laughs> I, I, was it me that put you in the box? In the back of the, the cabin? Yes. Thing? Yeah, it was oh. you. You were, you were adamant you. that I was your lucky charm. That <laughs> Good job, Grease Lightning. I'm still kind of adamant that you're my lucky charm. Well, and Good news for you. I'm going to be fighting again down at your favorite little rock. So you can, uh, you can hang out with me again. But yeah. in the meantime, do you want, like, I mean, how far are we from the Dragon's Tooth? Uh, you're kind of across town from the Dragon's Tooth. You're at the um, south end of town, and the Dragon's Tooth is at the north end. Well, uh, I'll pay for your food and your, your drinks. You want to have a drink real quick? To no, the, no, the no, 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 no. I don't want anything to do with you guys. I'm, I'm, no, I, I want you to let me go. At least tell us what happened. I told you. What yeah, else? Cage. When I was in the, you... in the box? I mean, how much you did you see? Did you... you guys were talking about going to the Agora. That's all I know. And then it was silent for hours. I've been, I slept okay. in that. I've got aches in my neck and my back. Okay. Well, it was kind of comfortable in there. No, it no. was not. No, it probably okay. sucks. Best of luck. Thank yeah. you. Sorry. He wanders off and you see him kind of adjusting the piece of cloth you put over him, trying to have some decency as he walks through town. Okay. Mess with the bowl. Now we just go mess with Igora now. But we just, like, five, 20 steps away. Um... Igora Amphitheater? The Agora is the yeah, center, the kind of. It's outside of. Yep. Yeah, it's just like store. That's st you still got to walk through town to get there, but yes. Um, let me see where we are. Okay. So, you're at the Agora. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Just want to make sure that I have everything. Okay, okay, okay. Do do do, Agora. Um, okay, you see the, now it's definitely in the afternoon, the, the merchants have all their stores up, and uh, you see Sostratos um, selling his, uh, his statues, and he greets you with happiness, he says, ah, yes, heroes, my best customers, come, come, how was your night? Do you guys remember him? I do. I remember him, but I'm just going to kind of glare at him. Jeff, what was the name again? Sostratos. Sostratos, uh, yeah. He's the guy that made the effigies of us when we first came in, right? That's yeah. right. He's All the right. guy that we were told by the guard could fix uh, the the removed penis. Hmm. Are you speaking in gibberish? Yeah, I noticed that. Who is? I have yeah. Sostratos' as, uh... Wow, what the hell am I reading? <laughs> I just don't have a, a comment checked on his Moon sheet. Runes. Oh my god, it's gibberish! <laughs> Speaking of which, I mean, do you guys want to go find the giant penis before somebody else does? Yeah, the, the, the sooner we can do that, the, the, you know, the less I have to think about it. You know, yeah, Sol Solano's like, about it a lot. can we... So <laughs> Okay, so, really. Solano has is like, can we just do this, please? 
Maybe Sostratus well, could just help us move it. Yeah, and I mean, he's he's going to be needed for this task anyways. That's true. Plus, all hands on we, all hands on deck. Deck. We might actually get like some sort of reward for finding it, and if somebody else finds it before us, they might be able to tie certain people yes. of our party back to this. Yeah. Hello, Hi. heroes. How was your night? Weird. And, and I glare at him. You are my best customers. Last night you came to me very late in the night, but I am happy to do business anytime, and you spent an inordinate amount of money buying all of my figures of Heroes of Thylea, uh, Pythor figurines, my largest version of, of you, Zark, and uh, yes, it was, it was wonderful. How much did that cost? Oh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, at least uh, perhaps a couple hundred drachma. Not thousands, though. Oh, no, I'm, I haven't made my way as an artist that much. And you, uh, what do we, what do we do last night? Oh That's well, a better question. You seem to be celebrating something, and uh, you had a couple of pretty women that could not stop giggling. They just talked about how you wanted you won some money, you wanted to spend it, and uh, and yes, you you came up and uh, oh, and right behind you, you see a woman approaching, a woman that you recognize as Phoebe. Aristodemos' wife, and he says, Ah, oh, look, it's my uh, second best customer. And oh. she comes up to you, Solano Deo, and she says, Hey there, handsome. Good to see you again. And she kind of squeezes your tush. Uh, what? Uh, <laughs> nice to see you too. Well, you guys look like you're alive and well. Good times last night, uh, huh? Well, uh, sure. He's clearly, Solano's cr cl clearly nervous. Oh, he now you're to, acting shy. I see. He doesn't want to admit to Phoebe that he doesn't remember anything because he doesn't want her to feel bad. Okay. But he also wants to know what happened. So he's in a moral me. dilemma. Uh, I'm going to, okay, let's see how this role playing goes. Phoebe, Phoebe, dear. Uh, yes, my little nymph. Okay, uh, so, I may or may not have had a lot of things last night. Do you understand what I am inferring? Oh, you had a lot of things last night, Solano, dear. Could you do me a favor, Phoebe? Yes. Could you refresh me on if we did anything and where we went last night? Oh, Solano, not in public. Oh, so those things? Oh, I mean, we were... He is blushing a lot right now. Uh, yeah, I I thought... I mean, I hope that's okay. You don't remember? I'm trying not. I mean, I woke up and I, I felt great. I mean, so it must have been amazing. You're a beautiful woman. Oh, wow. Well, well. So I think... So I, I am sure... So I know from the bottom of my heart that it was time well spent unfortunately a lot of what i had imbibed last night didn't quite agree with me in my mind oh um something i can help with yeah actually yes um don't tell aristodemos anything that happened okay oh of course not in fact we uh, need to talk about Aristodemos. Because he's mad at us. Oh, yes. Because, because <laughs> well, okay, T tell us first. Well, I don't have to tell you. I will show you. You see, we are lucky enough to have a little bit of uh, magical security at the uh, Aristodemos zoo slash household. And she okay. goes into her clutch bag and pulls out a, a mirror. And she says, gather around. And she has all of you gather around. And in the mirror, uh, she shows you 
that there, um, let's see. So she hands you a small mirror. She says she found it this morning as she was looking through, and she thought she'd take it before her list so Deimos, her husband, found out. Um, it acts as a bit of a security camera, this magic mirror. You could see an image of yourselves from the night before. You are oh my God. crouched over and giggling and shushing each other as you lead by a leash a griffin out of the gates of Aristodemus' estate. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And into the guard wagon. You see oh in the God. mirror Kira, Honora, and Bobocles. And then you see someone going back in to the building, and you see them uh, pulling Solano Deo uh, away from Phoebe. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And she okay. goes, okay, now that you've seen it, I'm going to delete it. It is best if this evidence does not exist. And she whispers a command oh. word into the mirror, and it is gone. Phoebe, you are wonderful. Of course. And, you know... Um, I know that it's a little complicated right now with you and my husband. So, if uh, if you'd like, I can uh, arrange the Griffin to get back home without him being aware. Yes, please. That'd be great. Uh, and and I'm sorry, Solano. I really am. I I told you that I would see you later that night at the karaoke bar, the the Tipsy Siren, and. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it. You see, Aristodemos, he came back super upset. I just couldn't get away, my dear. Okay, well, if there's... I appreciate there's a human being, so I'm going to tell you this right now. Your husband is a sore loser. I would encourage him to just lighten up a bit. Well... Just generally. Does that make sense? I mean... Yes, he's... You have, to, you have, you have to live with the guy. He has provided us a lot, and with the drought, which I would like to assume that you guys help lift that, yes. um, because it has rained since then, since the whole Anora sacrifice, um, she says that perhaps he will lighten up. But losing 20,000 drachma is not going to help uh, with his yeah. stress. Yeah, he's going to kill you. He's, gonna... he's not going to kill us. He's going to kill me. Nah, he's not going to lay a finger on you. I met Solano. So, did I mean, you guys have know, a good time at the Tipsy Siren, the karaoke bar? I yeah. think so. Hmm. Could you tell us where that is to refresh our memory? Oh, uh, Tipsy Siren is yeah. somewhere. Yeah, yeah, it's not in the map because this is all home hidden underground. Stuff. Um, yeah. No, she, it's in a secret society. She <laughs> points to a, a building that's uh, sort of attached to the Dragon's Tooth, but its own separate establishment. And she goes, "Yeah, that's the Tipsy Siren. It's usually open pretty late, and uh, it was. I was sad that I couldn't come. I heard good things last night. I offer Phoebe a, a, a handshake, a hug. Uh, for helping us, yeah." And she, okay. she stops and she says, Solano, I know this may be the end of our little thing. Is there some other relationship I should be aware of? Yeah, I kind of swore a life oath to, uh, to someone named Versi. Oh. So I'll, ha I'll, I'll, so I'll have to break the news to her. Hopefully she doesn't kill me, but we'll see. Kill you? Uh, that's quite a relationship. Are you sure? Yeah, it's pretty serious. What? Are you sure it won't be the other way around? That I kill her? No, no, I would no, never kill her. no, no, that she'll kill Phoebe. Oh no, probably not. She's too, she's too nice. I don't know about that one. I don't think I don't take Versi as the jealous type. I no, but that's that's another thing with women <laughs> in general. I'm pretty uh, sure that uh, might go another way. Yeah, that might be a bit of a concern. I'll just have to talk to her and be forthright and honest. Okay. Honesty is the best policy, unless your name is Aristodemos. Then you can <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> just saying how it is. Uh, we, so we Solano's, do... been, Solano's been kind of like more outspoken since uh, we have been to the necropolis of Telemach. Yeah. 
Are you asking well, we or do telling me? For her to, like, no, I'm letting you guys know. He's at, a, he's at a small change of personality. You arrange for what? For her to come get the Griffin. Like, do we have to be there? She can just go get it. And... Yeah, you. It, could... If you tell her where he is, that you were at the palace, uh, she says that she will arrange her staff to discreetly return the Griffin back to uh, the Aristodemos estate. Yep, Let's that would that. be great. Okay. We should go where? Yeah, the statue seller doesn't have much other information other than you bought a bunch of stuff from him. Got amphitheater, and then we got oh, this wait. new underground bar area. The karaoke and bar. And we could go to get the giant penis. Could also do that. So, what should we do first? Go to the karaoke bar. Yeah, we'll have to go to Tipsy Siren. There we go. I feel like if somebody discovers the giant penis before we get it back, there might be bad things happening. Oh, we'll go on the way then. We'll go to the amphitheater that's like right next to us, and then we'll go grab the ding dong and then bring it to the guys. <laughs> right? We just never talk about it again. Yep. It's out of our hands. I'm not touching it. So yeah, I'll you are in the Agora, so the... Uh... The karaoke bar is to your right. The public amphitheater is to your left if you're looking at the river. Um, and and then, yeah, the the penis is up at the King's Palace. We can do, we can do amphitheater and go palace. And then, yeah. Why, why do you want to go to the amphitheater so Because I feel like that's where Kira would be of any other place. But she's probably at the karaoke bar. Yeah, that's also true. I mean, we can go peek our heads in at the amphitheater, but I'm that's not true. staying long. So wait a minute. So so we have deduced so far that Tipsy Siren is a place we should go. It's a place of importance, possibly. Karaoke. And then and and then yeah, that's karaoke bar. And then we're gonna head to get the Griffin back or deliver the penis. Griffin's well, taken care of. Yep. Griffin, you said Griffin's taken care of? Yep. Okay, cool. So then we'll go to Tipsy, deliver the penis, and then check out the amphitheater? <laughs> yeah, that works. I feel like there's no reason not to at least check out the amphitheater. I mean, I'm willing to go on a shy as hunch if you guys are. I mean, we're right here. At the Do you just want to go to the amphitheater Mike's... quick first? Yeah. Yeah, we go check it Quickly. out. There's there. Bam. We'll be... We can go to the amphitheater, and then Griffin Penis, and then let's go deal with fucking Kira. That's I love really how I, I love how we're just nonchalant, like penis. <laughs> yes, you come to desensitize is what happened. Kind of like, kind of like Patrick Warmer for Family Guy. Hey, uh, talking about this penis. <laughs> All right. So, what's the consensus? Where are you heading? Amphitheater. Um, amphitheater. Okay. You go uh, down that little alley there to the public amphitheater, and when you approach, a usher uh, comes up to you and says, there you are, we knew you'd come, you're just in time, and he starts hustling you along the corridors, under the amphitheater, and through, like under the seats and around to the backstage area, and then you come out in the main area, and you're led to a wide table. You see at the table, uh, head down what looks to be Kira, drowsily sitting. She's got a pair of dark glasses on. She's visibly hungover, and she pops her head kind of up, and she says, About time you showed up. These guys are about shitting themselves, and there's no way I'm doing this by myself. At the amphitheater? At the amphitheater. She's at a table okay. on stage, and she says, About time. Hey, Kira, how you, uh, how you holding up? No talkie. Just <laughs> sit down and... She's worse than us. This is your what? fault, Ashaya. What are we doing here? Shh, no talkie. So Shush, that. sit. So do you guys sit down? I will sit. Okay. I'll sit as well. Yep. So you guys sit down at the table and after a moment... A teenager walks on stage and begins to loudly and badly play on some pipes. 
After a few minutes of this, they go, and another teen comes up and gives a recital. Uh, there's a card trick. This teen keeps saying, is this your card? And drawing the wrong one and the wrong one, getting more and more desperate. Uh, roll perception. Zark. Saren perception. So Ashaya and Zark, you guys notice that Kira is definitely sleeping behind her sunglasses. She looks like <laughs> she looks like this, like she's paying attention, but you notice that with her dark glasses, she is sleeping. For certain. Huh. Um, um could I roll to see if like some healing magic could possibly make her feel better? Sure. Can I determine that with like maybe medicine or something? Yeah, you could probably like perk her up. Yeah, do you, uh, yeah, with the 12, so you are able to kind of nudge her and, you know, maybe give her some sparkling water or something. And after, yeah. after a little while, she kind of like, okay, okay, what? I'm going to speak softly to her, though, because of knowing with my medicine that she's probably not too receptive to a lot of noise right now. And I say, Kira, do you remember anything about last night? And before you ask, yes, I think Phoebe and I possibly had relations. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Yeah, I remember everything until after the Tipsy Siren. And we totally messed up the place, and it's partly why we're here. Let's not go there. Why are we here? Wow. Well, we found Kira, guys. Mm-hmm. I'm happy not, about that. Let's not go to that tipsy place, because I don't want to... I don't want to see the damage that we so did. So did we, like, completely... Like, okay, on a scale of 1 to 10, on the pain scale, how much pain do you think we put that place through? Oh, it was a mess. Ashaya was flying in the rafters and throwing plates. <laughs> Why? Throwing plates? Plates. Why are you guys... I mean, clearly, you're... I get plates. Clearly, you're no longer affected. Ashaya is a fucking party animal. No, guys. You're idiots. This is oh. not from alcohol. What, what do you mean it's not from alcohol? This is the telltale sign of Lutheria fucking with you. Ah, uh, that would make more sense. Did you guys, like, oh. not pour libations for Lutheria? Did you do oh, some stupid fuck. shit like that? I didn't mind. We were at Aristodemos' place, and I believe he wanted to do that to Lutheria. I think that's what happened. Yeah, well, she sometimes takes her time, but she loves to fuck with people. But clearly, well, you you are cured somehow. Uh, you don't have your memories back, I take it? Well, we no. Have, no. We have an idea of what happened, though. Yeah, well, maybe you're not cured yeah, all the puzzle. way. So, um, you know where um, Nora is at all? Uh, she was with you guys when I left you. Mm. She's kind of disappeared. What, what happened cool. to her? Cool. Well, so why is that guy doing bad magic? Hmm. Uh, yeah, he's terrible, and he ends, and then you see another young person, for some reason, dressed as an octopus coming up on the stage. <laughs> is this stage what? name Ye Octopus? Tell us what the hell is going on here. Uh, I don't know everything. Let's see, you guys, did you, um, did you go to the Grinning Gin? Yes. Yep. Okay. Did you did you go down to the Rock of Esther? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Did you go to the Tipsy Siren? No. No. Okay, I well... Don't, I don't feel like going there now that you told us that we screwed up the place. Yeah, yeah, that was that was probably, uh, probably bad. Um, did you go to the Tattoo Parlor? Saren, I see that you totally just messed up your arm. It's a Tattoo Parlor, what, what was no no one said anything about this? Oh, well, there was a, we definitely went there. I 
I took it off. You wanna go back for a new one? No. I'm more talking about this shit show of a, a competition, I think, is what's going on. Is that what's going on here? Uh, yeah. I made a deal with uh, Thisbay, who owns the uh, Tipsy Siren, because we messed up the joint. And, uh, and you know, I, I basically uh, agreed to judge this stupid competition. So it's something I've been avoiding for a while because the Bard College at Mitros wants the poet laureate of the area to judge. And, and so I roped you guys into it. I'm sorry. It's terrible. Pick, uh, a, pick just, a random let's one. Just pick the bagpipe player. Like, pick, pick the octopus kid. Okay. Be a real star. Octopus okay. bag player. We choose him. They look around confused. There's no octopus bagpipe player. He's there. You just can't find him. He's there. Like the kid with the octopus costume. He'll be great. So it takes about uh, an hour of seeing terrible performances. And half the time she was sleeping, you talked a little bit, you sat through a few more performances, and uh, she's still pretty annoyed and stuff. She's like, oh, well, we got to find Honora. Her coronation's tomorrow. I mean, she was with you at least most of the night. She was with us when you left us. Yep. At the underground karaoke bar. Uh-huh. Do you remember anything about a giant penis? Um, no. That sounds interesting, though. Yeah. <laughs> you know that it, it, you know that it was... It Don't worry about it. Got attached to a big old Sidon statue, man. Hmm. Let's see. We go near uh, some temple, though. Okay. Sir Big Sidon Man. Uh, say that again, sorry. Did we go near a temple of Sir Sidon? Guy? Did you roll history? History. <laughs> uh, yeah, you do recall going to, uh, around, I mean, obviously the statue that you had ripped the penis off of, uh, was by the Temple of Sidon. Do we have any reason to go there? I mean, we have to go... I don't no, we don't. We can grab a penis, take it to Pythor's place, upstairs, let them fucking deal with it. Where, where else could Anora be? I have no clue so, where else she could be. We have to We have to go to the place that you trashed, Ashaya. Oh, I don't want to. <laughs> well, that's the last place Anora was with us that we know of. Well, I like to not go to the place where people will remember my face as a bad act. I want people to remember <laughs> me as being a star and not a thrashing mess of plate throwing. Okay, I shoot oh. I shoot Elders Blast, not Elders Plates. Pretty sure... I mean, we can go deliver the penis real quick and see if that helped us in any way. But I'm pretty sure we're going to have to go there. How about this? I'm just going to go wait inside the temple a big side on man okay and you guys can go check out the, the tipsy place i don't want to go anywhere near it why are you acting weird what do you mean i'm just gonna go wait outside saying? of it i i feel like shy is being weird about this tipsy place and... roll insight yeah that's what i was getting to it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it seems odd. Uh, Ashaya has just generally seemed odd for the last couple of days, and then you add the drunken debauchery, and it's just really hard to get a read on her for Zark. Well, anybody with me to go grab a giant penis? You guys go grab the ding dong and all the way outside, outside the statue where the ding dong is taken. Well, no, we're not supposed to, like, alert them. I'll just be nearby. I won't go anywhere near it. Just look from just a distance. Come with us and make sure that nothing happens. I'll be I'll be fine. I'll be fine. 
So wait, who's going where? I, I'm gonna go grab a giant penis. Okay, you head to the palace. I'm just gonna go start flying around Tempo Sidon. Okay, which is also near in in, in and around the palace. What about uh, Solano and Saren? I would go help with the delivery of the penis. Okay. And and I want to grab the statue guy on the way. Nice. Sure. Okay. So you meet up again with Sostratos, and uh, he's a little confused. He's like, oh, it's the middle of the day. My wares are selling like hotcakes, and you want me to do what now? I need you to be very discreet. Can you be discreet? Uh, yeah, I can be discreet. Pythor needs your help. Ah, well, anything for King Pythor. Sorry that this interrupts your midday sit. It's okay. He takes the cloth and covers his little uh, concession stand deal. He says, I will okay. follow yeah. the heroes. You guys have put me up very nicely for several, several uh, moons. I am very happy to be in your service. Do you have another giant cloth? We're going to need that. Oh, sure. He goes in the back and finds a large cloth that he usually displays his wares on. Okay. Does it seem big enough for... Uh... It does. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you all head towards the palace. Um, as you go into the courtyard, Ashaya breaks off from you and hangs around the Temple of Sidon. In the courtyard, you find the, the bush that's uh, seen better days, and the large statue cock is still there. Raping immediately the cover over it. Okay. Throw the cover over it. There's a guard in the courtyard that kind of looks over and... Just shrugs it off, continues walking. Just kind of like wave at him, like, hey man, good to see you again. And, uh, yep, gonna hoist up the giant penis from the back end. Okay, so Stratos is a little confused and he says, Is this part of my job for you today? Yes. Can oh. you give me a hand? I just need you to support the shaft of this. Sure, it looks like a marble column of some sort. Yes, yeah, something close to that, yep. Okay. He helps you lift it up, and you guys start to carry it. In the meantime, Ashaya is hanging out uh, by the Temple of Sidon. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, what are you doing? Uh, what do I see around the area? Uh, you see a couple of uh, Order of Sidon guards. You see some cleaning crew uh, kind of wiping down things. And uh, there's some uh, kind of like caution tape, the equivalent of Greek caution tape around the statue. And uh, you, you see that the cleaning folks are a little bit on edge just in terms of keeping an eye on the area and making sure no one gets too close to the statue. Okie dokie. One of the cleaning crew comes up to you and says, uh, you guys had quite the night. Um, you wouldn't happen to have my keys, do you? My keys. What do they look like? Um, well, they look like a key, and I, I wasn't on shift, but the previous cleaning shift said that you guys were quite a bit rowdy, and there was several things missing and I'm not making accusations but uh, the place is kind of a mess and I can't do my job unless I can get into my cleaning closet and I'm afraid that it'll look frowned upon like I'm not cleaning when in fact I'm just locked out of my closet are you able nope. to pick a lock at all? I could try and open the door if that's what you're asking um, um, it's, it's probably not your job to do that. It feels a little weird asking uh, someone who's staying at the palace. I, I, I'll I'll talk to the the other staff and see if I could figure something out. Uh, if you need help, I don't mind helping. I can come open in a few seconds. Uh, I'm not oh. really doing much at all. Okay, okay. Um, come on by to the supply closet, and you walk down the hall. Uh, give me a perception check. Okay, uh, looks like a normal supply closet. 
and you start to pick the lock. Do you have thieves tools? Uh, I believe I still uh, have my thieves tools. I do. Yeah, I don't know why you have thieves tools. Did sure. I purchase them? Yeah, so you oh. could make uh, you could. I think you click on thieves tools or something, and it'll prompt a, yeah, let's uh, see. De a dex check or sleight of hand or something. Tools. Meanwhile, you guys uh, carry this large thing through the palace. Uh, you get a couple of strange looks. But uh, you just kind of nod your heads and pretend like uh, you're doing God's work uh, hauling this cock through the halls. <laughs> and you get to the, um, the main uh, area there with the statue. And uh, since uh, Ashaya and the cleaning folk uh, has left, um, it's fairly empty. There's a couple of folks standing around, but otherwise the statue looks like it's unguarded besides a big cloth over the waist. I mean, are we supposed to deliver this to some other room, not necessarily the statue? Oh, yeah, that's right. So, yeah, there are, um, so you stop before and there's uh, the Pythor's Guards Quarters. It's the one that says guards and not uh, with the symbol of the Order of Sidon. And you knock and you come into kind of a, a barrack style um, area where the guards rest and change and whatnot. And you see the man that you talk to and he says, oh, oh. Uh, is 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 that it? I think so. I need some assurances, though. Uh, assurances. Uh, meanwhile, Ashaya, your lock uh, pick broke in the lock and did not open. Damn it! I need to make sure that we're not going to be charged for this. We found this laying in the courtyard. Yeah, I don't know why you would be charged. You you basically did what I asked. I'm just making sure. Is, that is, do you, know, have, do you have a way to attach it? And I point at a sculptor buddy. And he, and he says, oh, I, can, I can attach this. And he looks at the rough edge of the penis, and he says, it, from what we could tell, there was no uh, smaller pieces. It looked like a clean cut, and... So Stratos is like, I can definitely make sure it looks uh, like it was not touched. What's this going to cost, Stratos? No comment on that. That's hilarious. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> cost I you. I mean, come on. It's starting to. It's starting to get to that point where how many more do we have to do? <laughs> um, so yeah, he says, uh, yes, please attach it right away. And he... Uh, did you see Lonnie call? What are we attaching? That's right. You're attaching a penis to the... You, you wanted me to say that well, uh, Jocelyn. Yeah. <laughs> um, attaching a penis to what? We're attaching a penis crazy. to a very large statue. Naturally. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> uh, we are just not adults, are we? We're classic, we're, Dave. We're not adults, no. I'm a child. No. Okay, um, yeah, so you go back to the foyer, and you are able to convince Sostratos, and you guys casually, you know, kind of remark about the statue as he's kind of under the cloth, uh, <laughs> just <laughs> working it, and uh, he pulls out some uh, adhesive tools and uh, steps back, and it looks uh, good as new. A little crooked. <laughs> Maybe I'll roll to see how good it looks. How did you do, so Stratos? Uh. Oh! <laughs> I will reveal that to everyone because it is a natural one. Uh, it doesn't let me reveal it. Um, yeah, it, uh, it's like basically like backwards and, and whatnot, so it looks awful. Yeah, oh, I, I assume that it was probably like hanging flaccid basically at this point. There we go. Like straight up. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't erect, but yes, it looks less than uh, it did before. It looks uh, sadder. Weren't we supposed yeah, to take a couple of... inches off? Okay, <laughs> yeah. we get it. We get it. So, uh, okay. The good news so is we... uh, usually people admire the entire statue and not necessarily the groin. So were we supposed to look for the princess or something, the queen? Yes, but at least... We helped these guys, not necessarily people I want to help, but at least we helped make something a hole again. 
So now we were supposed to go see some kind of karaoke bar. Yeah. Ashaya, where are you? Uh, am I still at the door? They uh, they told me to unlock, right? Yeah, but your lockpick broke in the door. Uh, will they let me cast a spell or no? Sure. Uh, I will cast. I will cast gaseous form. Ooh. Become a puff of smoke. I can't add a fix on again. You can become a puff of smoke. Puff of something. Yeah, do you, do you... There we go. Do you? Uh, wow. I can fit through a little crack in the door. Yeah, right. I think. And then you go can... on the other side and unlock it. Sure. Um, so you're able to do that, and as soon do you like manifest as a physical form on the other side, or do you stay gaseous? Yeah, like, yeah, I can like stop it. They're, okay. Like, uh, gassy and then physical. Yeah, as soon as you get to the other side, you hear a little squeal, mm -hmm. and uh, from inside the lock closet, you see a figure that is bundled up and trying to cover themselves. Do I recognize the figure? They're under cloth. Do you open the cloth? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, you see Anora looking hungover, dehydrated, and embarrassed, and she goes, Oh, oh, Shia. Oh, thank goodness. Um, can you get me out of here without being seen? What the heck are you doing in here? Uh, I, I could tell you all about it, but let's, please, get me out of here. I don't want anyone to see this. Okay, just wrap a cloth, I guess. Okay. Put a cloth over her and just unlock the door. Okay. And the cleaning person sees you now with this person bundled and kind of hey, looks... There you go. There you go, man. Here's the cleaning supplies you wanted. Um, thank you. Are, are you taking supply? What is... What's happening? No, here's your supplies. I'm just gonna... She's been, uh... She's a bit drunk, this lady here, so I'm just gonna... Do you a favor and just get her out of here. I appreciate that. Okay. So, no where do you go with Anora? Uh, palace. You back to your room? Yeah, I bring her back to her room. Okay. The rest of you don't know this, so where are you going? No. Yeah, I'm the tipsy too. Okay, the tipsy. <laughs> okay. So you go to the tipsy. Uh, what's that? Oh no, never mind. I was helping with the statue. Yep. So yeah. Statue's done. It looks uh, pretty well, flaccid. Yeah, so, so now we're going to Tipsy, right? The Tipsy Siren. The Tipsy Siren. Okay, cool. Let's head there. So you get there. There is annoyed uh, bar owner Thisbe, and she says, "Oh, you guys, shouldn't you be uh, judging some competition with Kira?" What Already the, what judged. The bartender's name. Thisbe. Uh, it's this B E. Okay, cool. How come yes, all guys, that makes sense? Yeah, as Zark already said, we're done with that competition. Yep. Been we... there, judged that. <laughs> Great. Zark is always funny. Well, you are not around here. You're not allowed around here. You, you all need to go. Um. Okay. Sure. What what about what about your little flying friend? That's not our friend. He, she left. Like I, I don't even know where she is right now. Good. I, I'm trying to track her down to figure out. Like, do we owe you something for what she did here? You Kira would Kira owe me. Yeah, you. Kira was playing instruments. You guys were singing arm in arm. It was good, except for. Um, Ashaya would not stop singing. She challenged everyone in the bar one by one to a karaoke contest, and she won every single one. And when I say she won, I mean that she declared herself the winner each time. Uh, I tried to get you guys to leave, and she flew up in the rafters, continued to sing. I tried to shoo her down, and she <laughs> threw plates at me. And and Where Saren, did she get these plates from? Like, let's somebody obviously left plates out where she could just go grab them. This is a karaoke bar. We serve hors d'oeuvres and appetizers. And Saren, you, you had something happen to you. You had your eyes glazed over, and 
and you kind you kind of went crazy and started attacking randomly and and thank goodness you didn't have your weapons you just started attacking anyone nearby what do you mean glazed over uh, your eyes they looked they looked like they weren't your own mm, what did they look like uh they looked black with little shades of purple and blue kind of flashing in them it was unnatural mm. Does this... mm, is she with us does that sound familiar at all is who with you kira uh no i think kira was still at the public amphitheater she was not moving pretty sure she passed okay. out on the Table okay. over there. But you can give me a um, Arcana check, maybe, or Nature. Oh, they're both zeros. Eldritch plate. <laughs> okay, yeah. So with your skills in Nature, you recognize what she's describing as uh, something that you suffered from before, which is a bit of madness. Um, I don't remember exactly how you got it before, but uh, another one of Lutheria's tricks. Before we leave, do you remember Enora being with us? Yes. She was more behaved than you all were. Well, naturally, a queen should be. Um, to be queen. Do you know where we were going? Yes, but she should dress the part. It was right. it was right. real real late. I was I would hope that you guys were probably ending the night, but you seemed pretty rowdy. So who knows? Yeah, probably did not end the night. No, you were probably headed to the Dragon's Tooth for more beer. Back to the Dragon's Tooth. Uh, not that Jesus. I'm asking about Enora for any reason other than the fact that you know she's a wonderful singer. Yeah. Yes, yes, a wonderful singer. I hope um, um, to the dragons too. I hope as queen that she still comes to the karaoke bar from time to time. I have a feeling that it won't happen as much as she used to. But yeah. she'll still she's still my frequent. I yeah. hope so. Well, I mean a while. Or thing. maybe she'll hold things like karaoke at the panelist and have you cater it. How do you feel about that? That sounds great. Yep. And that would mean there would be less assured chaos in your fine and adorable establishment. It's true. It's, it's like a win-win. You make money. 100% true. Well, Ashaya, if you see her, tell her she has a lovely voice, but she just needs to tone down her behavior. It will do. No hard feelings. Did you judge the contest? Yeah. Great. Call it good. Don't come back. All right. Okay. Oh, so there are hard feelings. <laughs> I will be at the coronation. Maybe we'll sing some karaoke there, but I do not want you back in my establishment. There might be some coronation. There. I mean, some karaoke there. Uh <laughs> So all we got is the uh, tattoo parlor that Saren doesn't want to visit. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you could head back to the Dragon's Tooth. You can go to the tattoo parlor. What else is there? I mean, we can figure, we could see, I mean, it's on the back side of the Dragon's Tooth, right? So, like, walking through, look for the bar owner. Sure. See if the bar owner's there. If he's not continue on the tattoo parlor okay yeah it's coming into afternoon now and uh you get to the dragon's tooth once again and this time uh you do see delphian and he sees you coming in and he says ah and he greets you he gives you each a big hug open arms and says please please where is the shia Why do you ask? I want to give her a big hug, too. You heroes of the prophecy not only have saved so much of this town, saving Princess Enora from her fate, but you 
have saved the Dragon's Tooth. I cannot thank you enough for your generosity in saving this inn. Here, here, I've already gotten the, it worked out. And he shows you a deed of the Dragon's Tooth entitling you all total 20% ownership share in the inn as well as drinks on the house and a room whenever you need it. Wow, we're big ballers now, huh? <laughs> this is how we start making money. Now, sir, we need to sit down and start working out the marketing plan. Uh, and I'd like to take like a good 15 minute break and just like work out like the kinks of his marketing plan into reaching like the lower city to come up to the, to the upper city. And All right. Be able to sell more drinks. So while you're in the middle of that and getting really into the marketing scheme, you see Lucas appear uh, at the table and uh, seems to be kind of agitated and uh, signaling for you all to, to follow him like a little dog, you know, Jimmy's stuck in the well kind of thing. Does anybody know Imperial? What does he speak? Uh, Lucas, he probably has some common. I don't know. We're going to find out. I doubt he's got find out. Uh, common, common Infernal. Yeah, he speaks Common and Infernal. So with his oh, broken up common was, language, sir. he says, follow me and uh, Ashaya Palace and Princess Honora. Sir, we're going to have to, I mean, start enacting the marketing plan because I, I'm going to need this establishment to start doing a little better than what it was, but we will be right back. Oh, we are already doing so much better, Zark. We are out but of the I, shadow of the Order of Sidon. But I think we can do better. Of and, course. And what we started waiting out here, just start enacting it. We'll be back. We'll, we'll look at the books again. We'll see how we're doing. But I am I guess I'll follow this freaking imp. I know you'd like Me that, personally. Bob. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, uh, Solano Deo and Saren, follow the imp? Because I bought a bar in one of our other campaigns. So we're following the imp? Do, do you? I'm asking. I do. I'll follow the imp. Okay. Is it Lucas? It's Lucas. It's Lucas. Yep. It's Lucas. Oh yeah, then I'm definitely gonna follow. I just heard imp, and I'm like, wait, is it Lucas? Thus, I asked that question. So, Saren, are uh, you going with them? Saren, it's Lucas. Should we? I'm going to follow him. Maybe he's going to take us to a Shia. Do you, Do you want to come with? I guess I'll follow. Come on, Saren. Have more pep in your step and more more. Rejoice in your voice. Come on, let us go. <laughs> You're now twenty percent owner of a bar. Yeah, that, <laughs> that will bring us income as we are adventuring. And the more that we adventure, the more notoriety this bar gets. I don't know. He's just like, this is just a weird day. Let's just get through it. <laughs> okay, so you head back to the palace. Uh, Lucas leads you straight through. Go ahead. Nine, do you want to break for a couple minutes? Uh, I was going to break after this little bit here. Perfect. Okay. Um... So you get back to the palace, and you see in the room that is a little bit more cleaned up, uh, Ashaya sitting with Princess Honora. Hey guys, how are you? I'm hoping we can get a little more insight to this. So where? So wait, wait, what? Okay. A sh a Everyone, settle down. Let me tell you everything. So Princess Honora is, uh, she was with you the whole night, and she's ready to talk. Okay. Uh, seems like you guys got most of the night down. Um, we started at the Dragon's Tooth. We followed a group of Copper Clan dwarves who invited you all to participate in an underground dwarven wrestling ring on the Rock of Esther. Uh, Zark, you stripped down, oiled up, uh, beat the current champion handily. Uh, they started chanting you, name Grease Lightning. You guys went to the Grinning Gin. You took uh, Bobocles, this little dwarf, along with you. Uh, the gambling den didn't allow weapons. Lorius offered to take the weapons and went back to the Dragon's Tooth. Uh, inside, uh, Aristodemos hailed you over. 
Uh, he was making fun of you for not having enough coin to join the high stakes table. So Ashaya took off her amulet of health, her family crest, and uh, Kira was playing a song, and Ashaya kept winning and uh, embarrassed Aristodemos and kind of won everything. Um, Solano Deo, you took Aristodemos's clothes, and uh, you had quite a bit in winnings, about 25,000 drachma. Um, and for some reason, Ashaya, you didn't, you didn't change out a gold or 500 drachma chip. You uh, wandered through the Agora buying late night snacks, including lots of uh, cream pies, which we put in our pockets for some reason. Uh, you came to the statue seller, uh, you bought everything he had, including uh, a large version of, was it Zark, I think I said? This one. So you had a, a whole lot to carry, uh, and we couldn't get it back. So you took a watch wagon that was left unattended. You put the large statue inside. You decided that that little dwarf was your lucky mascot, and you locked him in the wagon. I told you not to. I didn't think it was a good idea, but then you valeted it at the Grinning Gin. Um, we decided to go to Aristodemos's estate to mess with him further because you just wanted to make it worse for him, I guess. Um, you gave Phoebe a few statues and you kind of put them all over his estate as, as kind of a mocking joke, I think. Um, Solano Deo, you took off for some time and um, the group was goaded by Kira to cast Animal Friendship on the Griffin and uh, you guys stole the Griffin. Um, we then went to the Tipsy Siren and uh, but Phoebe didn't show up there. Um, that's Aristodemus' wife. We sang some songs, uh, so, some pretty aggressive karaoke, to be honest. Um, and there was, you guys were mostly impressing the middle-aged nobles that were there on Girls' Night Out. And then Saren uh, struggled and acted confused, wrecked the joint. And then Ashaya wouldn't stop singing, wouldn't leave. And anyway, Kira was able to get us out of there because she kind of worked with the, the bar owner and uh, made some sort of deal, uh, something about judging music. Anyway, uh, you guys were upset about getting kicked out and uh, you were gonna, you were talking about going to the temple and I think you said you were gonna mess, mess with, uh, and I quote from Solano, that big dick Sidon. So, wow. uh, <laughs> Kira said she couldn't participate in that, and she excused herself, muttered something about the oath, oath of peace and all that bullshit. Um, but on the way to the temple, we were greeted by this strange woman, this old hag-like woman who said that she would be able to cure whatever ails you, and, and you guys talked about your madness and it showing up and causing you to destroy the tipsy siren and all this and uh it was it seemed it's pretty straightforward but then she said she wanted something in return she said that uh, let's see if i could remember she said you all look like you had a good time tonight will you give me a good time and, and you all just agreed not realizing what i think i understand now is you agreed to give her your memories and and she said something about your your disease and madness would be cured if you rested, but your memories of the night would be gone. So once you realize what you had done, you basically said, "Fuck it, let's turn this bitch up to 11. and because uh, you knew you weren't going to remember anything. So that's when you went to the tattoo parlor. Siren got uh, Lorius's face inscribed on his bicep. Uh, you went to the Temple of Sidon, you liberated the statue's stone cock. Uh, and... Liberated! <laughs> and uh, I suddenly had this moral fit of good judgment, and I realized I'm going to be the queen of Astoria. And I, I can't be seen. I heard some noise uh, coming around, and... And I panicked. I, I accidentally locked myself in the supply cabinet, but I did not want 
uh, anyone to see me uh, accosting the statue of Sidon. I mean, I, the politics around that would just be more than, than I can take as a new queen. So, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of what happened. Um, that's all I know. Not all I know, too. You guys, uh, I think I think you had left. I, I heard you talking about going back to the Dragon's Tooth at the end of the night, but you obviously ended up here again. Whew! That was a night to remember. Yes, it was. All right. On to the coronation. On to the coronation. All right, break time. <laughs> See y'all in like five minutes. <laughs> Sounds good.
Hashtag eat. I have both plans on our statue guy erecting statues in the dragon's tooth and basically nicknaming it like the Heroes Inn or something like that and making it like a landmark of where we come to visit. Oh, that'd be increase, cool. To increase revenue at the dragon's tooth. That's like the most touristy thing I've ever heard and it's incredible. Yup. <laughs> oh, so. I meant to tell, I, I wanted to tell you this. So we live in Rockford, Illinois, which is not far from Chicago. It's like an hour and some minutes. So there was a water park that many years ago was bought out by Hurricane Harbor and Six Flags. We went there Saturday. Oh my God, it was so much fun. They literally have this water slide that you stand up nearly vertical in a pod. And then it counts yeah. down three, two, one and shoots you down it. Man, that was so awesome. They have some at Universal, too, at their uh, water park. Oh, they have that there, too. That's awesome. Yeah, that volcano. Oh, like that's the top what... Of the volcano. Really? Yep. That's sick. We would like that. Yeah, I... I, I was... would never. <laughs> oh, my God. And then we went on uh, another water slide that was just, like, a straight slide down, which scared the shit out of me, but it was fun. And then we went down some dark ones, and we had food. <laughs> and food. And food. Third. Yeah, but it was, a good, it was a good time. But we got season passes, because we're going to go to Fright Fest. Ooh, and nice. And we'll probably go back to the water park a few times. Yeah. We, uh, we gave up our season passes to Universal last year, but we'll be getting them again. Well, there you go. You gotta we ride uh that. you gotta ride the Velocicoaster. That thing was awesome. Yeah, I wasn't there the last time we were there. They were well, still it, building it. It'll be there this time. Yep. By the way, dude, where's Anora? We gotta name the episode <laughs> that. Dude, where's Anora? This is such a good this is like it's such a fun like little chase for information. And yeah. everyone's like super sassy and pissy, but we were kinda dicks. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it because I was like, this is like not going to be any battles. And see, people forget that that tabletop role playing games are role playing games. Right. And like R O L E and not R O L L playing. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was like that with Pathfinder because Pathfinder is a super math crunchy game. I was all about my character's builds and everything, didn't give a shit about story. Like, it got to the point where I met my wife at a convention and she reported me. To the one of the convention organizers because all I did was talk about my character. <laughs> I used to be that kind of guy. So D and D does it flips the whole script. Yeah, and it's fun. Well, and thanks for putting up with the the side quest. Uh, <laughs> so yes, episode name, uh, dude. Where's Nora? Perfect. Or where's Perfect. the princess? Something like that. <laughs> no, nah, I like dude. Where's Nora? Dude, where's Anora? Um, okay. You found Anora. It took you uh, the majority of the day. You guys laugh about it over uh, dinner at the Dragon's Tooth? Yeah, that sounds about uh, right. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be free, right? Yeah, it's going to be free. Um, after dinner, your exhaustion disappears. You feel so much better. And the following day, it is a parade through the streets. There is a uh, procession at the king's palace in the courtyard. She stands at a royal balcony as she is crowned Queen Honora of Astoria. Pythor presents her with her crown, stepping down as king. The entire uh, community is pretty excited. Even the Order of Sidon folks were glad to get rid of Pythor. Uh, although, you know, they're not totally on board with Princess Honora, but she seems Amazing. to be more respected than Pythor. Yeah, those Sidon people can politely shut the fuck up. <laughs> Just going to say that. Um, or in politely, whichever. Um, yeah. So, I was, I'm a, I was a little disorganized on some things, but um, 
It takes two weeks to fix your Dragon Lord armaments. Did I say that, or did okay. I did I give them to you already? Uh, I, I think, think you so. sent them off last time. I sent them to Vulcan. You sent them to Vulcan. Oh. Okay, so that was last time, so it's been a day. I will try to keep track of that. Um, I'm, I got a new sheet that I made just for forge item stuff. Uh, Zark, did you send the Minotaur horns and instructions to make something out of it? Okay. I, I sent Minotaur horns and something else, I thought, but yeah. Okay. Minotaur yeah. horns for the most part. Sure. So, uh, your last night in Astoria was, um, one day after sending armaments to Vulcan with Minotaur horns and whatnot. I will make that note better yeah. later. Okay. I think it was Minotaur horns for a wondrous item. Oh yeah, I already looked it up. I know what it is. Okay. I thought that was a very short time, but I don't know how short of a time. Oh, does it have a time on that chart too? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, and Zark, I need a nature check from you with uh, normal non-exhaustion. Just hmm. make sure you, you are. That uh, uh, so all. Uh, I could, let me yeah that? remove exhaustion from you. Oh well, yeah, we all slept, right? Uh, well, you haven't slept off the hangover. You got food and drink in you from the Dragon's Tooth, plus it's been all day, so you're bound to feel better. You should probably let that griffin out of that room. We did. Yep, you we hired uh, Phoebe, and she hired her staff to take care of it for you. Um, okay. Yep, she worked with you on that. Uh, Zark, with a 17, you are aware of the bronze dragon that you picked up, the dragon egg? Yeah. You are aware of a few things. You are aware that it must be exposed to the sky for 12 hours a day. And if you're unable to do that, you could suffuse it with electricity once a day using something like a shocking grass spell or similar. Um, and roll me a 3d6. Wow. Okay. Um, excellent. And yeah. Coronation goes well. Everyone celebrates. There is karaoke at the celebration. Um, Honora doesn't take uh, too much into the partying. She is full-on serious queen mode now, although she is pretty casual with you all. Oh, thank you, Zark. No problem. Did you pay for assisted? No, but I think I sent it off before we start coming yep. back to so the little yeah. send off stuff. Sure. Yeah. I sent for that shield. Should get soon, like in two days' time. Oh, right. The um, uh, Esther Archilander shield? Got a cool graffiti shield. No, I sent him the other shield. No, I, I'm the one with Esther Archilander. I gave that to him. Okay, so you already have that one. Okay, so uh, in the future, just remind me if you feel like something should be due and I don't have it, but I'll try to keep better track of that stuff. Yep, my Vulcan shield should be done in two days. Sent by two days. Two days since when? A day or two when I get when I sent the shield over there. Okay. To be, for it to be repaired. So you sent repair. it off when you got back from Telemach then? Yeah. Gotcha. Yep, because it came from Telemach. Okay. So, yeah, uh, you partied that first night in town, and then you spent a day looking. So, yeah, it's been uh, about two days. So um, I'm happy to say that as the, the celebration carries on into the day of the coronation of uh, Queen Honora, uh, a Kilodone arrives and um, comes to the palace requesting the... Uh, 
uh, requesting you, Saren. Okay. This weird clockwork angel is asking for your name or the package. The UPS driver. Yeah. Uh, it's not letting yeah, that's, me. It, yeah, that's what me. it doesn't just leave it at the door. <laughs> no, it, it does not. It does not trust such things. If the ring door, yeah, it, it does. We don't that's have a ring cool. door. Back. God, you gotta be there to sign for it. Yes. So it shows that's up so at the cool. palace. It goes to um, Vulcan's uh, blacksmith shop as well, and then it spots you in town, uh, walking the streets, and it somehow recognizes you and approaches you and says your name and hands you a golden shield of Vulcan. Looks like it's fixed now. Yes. Okay. So that was, yeah, you, I'm sure you read the, the details on that one. It'll be tricky to run in foundry, but we'll do what we can. Yeah. Okay. Now I just take off the broken part. Yep, you could just edit the name to say not broken. Okay. To go. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, this is a weird shield, but it's pretty cool, though. Yeah, it's super cool. I can shove monsters' heads into it and get their abilities. Yeah, it's pretty dope. Make sure it's equipped. It's like a whole hand. Oh, yeah, and Zark, did you get my message about how I was messing with your sheet and unequipped a bunch of stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So hopefully your hopefully. breastplate works now, maybe? Hopefully. Hopefully my breastplate. It was like, for some reason, dropping your AC to six when you equipped it. Yeah. So it should be tw 20 or something. 18 right now, but oh, I'm missing a shield, so we're good. Okay. Oh, no. Okay. I'll look at it. Yeah. I thought it was working for me, but I think it was working for me before, too, and then you logged oh, in. Oh, no. 18 should be fine. Cause I, think, uh, I think it's if you cast your shield, shield. of faith or whatever. Yeah, shield spell. Yeah. Yep. All right. So you all celebrate. Do you spend another night in Astoria? Yeah. Yeah. We don't really have anywhere else to go, I don't think. Okay. I we have quite a few other things to do. But... The last night in Astoria, it rains fairly well. And uh, Aesop comes up to you. He talks to you a little bit about your dragon egg and how to take care of it. He says that if you neglect it, then it can basically die as in not hatch. Um... And the following day, the rain lifts a little bit, still sprinkling a little bit. And you see something in the sky as you're getting breakfast and checking out the town a little bit more. You see, oh, I didn't put it in, oh. Doo -doo -doo. Nope, that's not the right one. By the way, before I go to sleep on this rainy day, yeah, I'm gonna throw my javelin of lightning just past the egg and let the lightning hit it, just to make sure that it's getting its warmth. You and, got it. Uh, Good work. Um, do that every day. So, in the distant skies, on the following day, when it's a little bit uh, less rainy out, you can make out three winged forms approaching the town of Astoria. Through the break in the clouds, a little gleam of sun shimmers off of their scales and you realize that they are young copper dragons. Shut the fuck up. You've heard rumors of the dragons of Mitros, but these creatures are far more splendid than you imagined. They come closer to you into town you see that the riding the dragons are red cloaked knights they seem to be high ranking centurions from another town they descend they touch down in the middle of town on the streets people give them a wide berth 
and they're several dozen yards away from you. Three knights with shields, swords, they dismount and approach you. The, they each have determined look in their eyes, and they suggest that they have been sent here with a mission, but they don't mean you any harm from what you can tell. Their leader steps forward and introduces himself. I am Tarshan. We come on behalf of King Acostus to escort you to his palace. He wishes an audience with you. Cool, and where is that at? Mitros? Mitros, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so we, so you are here, Tarsham, to send us uh, to speak to King uh, Costas. Correct. Uh, I would like to go. What about the rest of you? I think it is important if we establish Oops. good rapport with other kings. I will follow Solano. Can you tell us any information on why he needs us at all, or no? I will leave that to the king of Mitros. We will make sure that you arrive there safely. Uh, it takes about a day or two travel. I'm afraid that we cannot intervene in any encounters you may have along the way. And we ask that you do not speak to our dragons. Cool, cool. Well, we grab everything we need and then head out? We will be waiting for you along the road south of Astoria. Do you have any questions for us? Pack up your things and we'll see you outside of town. Hey, cool, bye. <laughs> so, a question, Jeff. Between the time we left Telemuk and came back to Astoria, dealt with all the craziness of Due to risk my car, et cetera, et cetera. Could I have been attuned? Dude, where to was my... my princess, first off? Okay, due to risk my princess. Chill. Okay, anyways. Could I be attuned to my crown? Oh, yes. Absolutely. You would have probably studied it and looked at it, and any time you stopped along the road back to Astoria, any time that you were chilling in the palace room, you would have definitely um, studied that thing and felt your connection to it as well as the power that it holds the only issue is we need a lot of money to cast the bond of the dragon lords yeah uh, so also with Pythor's hammer can I attune to that yep done oh wait Pythor had his hammer did you, did you ever ask for that back I sure did okay just in case. We got out of that crazy ass shit. I was like, can I tell you that back? <laughs> sure. Pythor uh, hands you back his hammer, and um, he still seems very drunk despite you spending several days with him at this point and noticing that he has not had a lick of alcohol. I do say to him. One last good fight, my friend. One last Maybe good fight? Last. I am the god of battle. I refuse to have one last fight. Then again we fight. What? Again we fight? What? Not yet. Not yet. Calm down, my lord. Calm down. <laughs> Soon. Soon, sir. Soon. Well, my reputation will precede me in Mitros. I haven't been there in many moons, but I'm excited to join you if you will have me. I'll take you. My door is coming with us. I, well, I, I look at the copper dragon plate. My door come with us. Oh, sure. I mean, it's up to you guys who travels in your... Your group, you are the heroes of the Heartlands. It's not my so job. So what about Kira and uh, Warius? Uh Kira's willing to come. Um, you want to try to persuade Lorius? Give me a persuasion Wait, check. Tra really he's traumatized from Telemark. Uh, that was pretty traumatizing. 
Yeah, Lorius goes with you. <laughs> One more time. Maybe this time it'll go better. For what? Anybody else? Oh, for Lorius? I mean, <laughs> we're, we're leaving the, uh, the donkey here, right? Yeah, we're not bringing Apollo. He's in the... Don't die. He's having the time of his life, right? Yeah, Apollo's he's like the dog. It, uh, Apollo's like the cat at the big, the big adorable cat at the cat cafe that everybody in the area knows about. <laughs> Apollo is the bear to be the tavern Should... mascot. Sure. Apollo with us though? Nope. Just Did left him there. Not slaughtered. They have specific instructions not to fuck with that donkey. Right. Hey, I'm Nora can watch it now. What did you all do? With, what did you all do with the watch wagon? We need to return that before we leave. <laughs> or we can have Phoebe do it because she's nice. Or she can arrange someone else to do it. Why? Why is Phoebe nice to us? Because I did her apparently. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. She's gonna come right out with it. She wanted like someone the... else. She wanted Solano's incense stick, so I said, come take a look. <laughs> or whatever. I'd like to talk to Queen Honora and just be like, hey, can you take care of Apollo? Make sure <laughs> nobody eats him. It's a good idea. Like, so after the coronation and as you guys are uh, discussing the excitement of going to Mitros, in the city streets, pulling you aside, Solano Deo, is a hooded figure that speaks to you. Uh, on the on the, like a alleyway, and she pulls up her hood, and you see Versi looking very, very upset. Oh, okay. Solano Dale. I Versi. thought I thought we had an arrangement. What am I forgetting about our arrangement? Solano Deo, you belong to me. We are together. I keep an eye on you, and okay, I listen. have seen things that I do not appreciate. Okay, well, as you like to watch me possessively from far away, I will tell you that I have acted incorrectly, and I am sorry and will not happen again. Oh. I, will also tell you, I will also tell you that I am being honest with you because I appreciate you very much. And I will also tell you that we severely messed up by not offering a libation of Etheria. And Etheria clearly had her way with all of us. That would be her M.O. But you so, are still a child, Solano Deo. You... Although very old, I have so much to learn. It's it's not your fault. It's Phoebe's but fault. And I will make her it. pay. Versi, oh. you need Versi, you need oh. to, Versi, you need to look at me right now. I'm so we called it. You need to look at me right now. It's okay. She's just a mortal. You need well listen, you need to understand. that I do not act in my right mind. Do not blame yourself, sure. sweet child. Well, well, well let, let me finish my statement. I am with you. I'm not below you. Okay? Obviously, you were below her. So, from partner to partner, let me just say that your anger is not wrong. You have every God-given right to be upset. However, the Versi that I love and know would spend that energy to do something more constructive and positive rather than go to a step below her stature. Solano Deo, your life was leaving your body, I, through the power of Mother Thylea herself, was able to conjure just enough energy. I knew there were great things for you, but I must admit, I am not fully a god myself. I have flaws. Okay. One of my flaws is, is you. 
And yeah. I, I will not you know that... let any mortal taint you. I mean, let's be honest. I'm not going anywhere. But did you also know that I was at one point a woman, and then I was also a dragon lord? Did you know that? And not tell me? Well, I was protecting you. That's okay. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not mad at you. I'm just trying to point out that there there is a flawed argument, but I don't hold that against you. I see that. I acknowledge it, and I accept it. You see, with the power of the magic, Jacena died. So yeah. you are a culmination of many factors, and oh, perhaps, absolutely. Perhaps Jacena's memories are still in there somewhere, but Solano I mean, I saw Deo. A few of them. Oh well, that's. That's wonderful. Perhaps it's it's fated to be so. Perhaps it'll drive you to end this horrible destruction that I see in my nightmares. But I will let Thylea burn if you stray from me. Well, I grab Versi's hand and I give her a hug. And I say, we are both bound together. And nothing can change that. Fate has decided we were meant to be. Okay, and so I whisper, and, I, and I whisper sweet, appropriate sweet nothings into her ear. And you see her kind of calm down, and yes, she whispers back in your ear, "Can I still kill her?" You can pretend to kill her, but not actually kill her. You, you, okay, here's the thing, Versi. You see, f yes, Phoebe and I made a mistake. However, the damage we have done to this town, to specific establishments, and, and, and towards specific groups of people, she's helping us to clear our names so we can continue to save Philea. So while the enemy of your enemy is my friend... They don't necessarily have to be your enemy. But but don't get me wrong, like you, your anger is not misplaced. I you know what if you decide to go pork some Seder or something, I'd be upset too. Mm. But let's be real here, Versi. You're wonderful and great. And without you I wouldn't be here. Like I said, we're oath bound. I put my faith in you, Solano Deo, and the faith in these heroes. Um, real persuasion, Solano Deo. I'm gonna try. Uh, I, I haven't been rolling good with these. Let's see. Dice to decide life or death. My butthole's clenched. <laughs> I have my faith in you. Yes! I don't say that out loud. I'm saying that as Cody. Okay. That's all well, she says. Me and Shia have been like hopefully missing in on some of this and just being very like, this is fucking awkward. <laughs> it's so awkward. And we were talking back and forth until mine didn't actually talk to a Shia. And uh, yeah, I feel like this is a very awkward situation. So there's still a, a crowd moving around, and um, she kisses you lightly on the cheek and turns Ooh. away from you, and before you even get a chance to see her leave, she's lost in the crowd, seemingly like smoke. Guys. Can I roll, like, a perception or something to see how much I could have heard or, like, sure. lift lead? Yeah. Lift <laughs> I'm assuming perception. Uh, yeah, you didn't see anything. You just saw him talking. You don't even know if it was Versi. Some, some lady chick over Did there. anyone? Yeah. Yeah, you rolled a one. Oh, nice. I had my secret spy, Lucas. It was my eyes yeah. and ears. So I'll leave Solano Deo to tell you guys what he wants to tell you. Uh, in the meantime... Coronation party ends. Things kind of settle back down in Astoria. Um, these three knights on Copper Dragons uh, appear to be waiting for you outside of town. 
Uh, Lourdes, Kira, Looks like the south Hathor gate point. is where they would wait for you. What? Lourdes, Kira, Pythor, all coming with us. Okay. Great. I did things to see Tail to meet you. Lord, Lord, so Lorius, Pythor, and Kira come with. Okay. Yup. Yup. The normal party. Hey, I'm so goodbye. excited. I feel like I feel like this is like the opposite of a harem anime. So long as he's <laughs> in constant relationship issues with his with his partner. It's the best way to view it. Yeah, but like seriously though, like I was, I, Solano was gonna tell Versi what happened either way. I am just very glad that Versi's understanding enough of the fact that people make mistakes and they're messed up that she didn't kill Phoebe because Phoebe really helped us out. Yeah, and I would feel bad. Before we leave, I will spend a lot of money. How much does this cost? Mm -hmm. I shall spend six hundred. Zark, get... Zark, we gotta figure out how to get five thousand drachma piece for our dragons i'm telling you right now we have an in i was trying to develop the actual marketing plan and how to start driving more business to the end that is how we get five thousand drachma i dig it we'll use that to acquire our draconic assets i dig it you guys want to buy some stocks <laughs> wow Realistically, uh, yeah. Before we leave, I need to commission our uh, statue friend to make statues to place in this bar to kind of make it the theme park bar. Sure. Uh, he's... Go ahead and roll persuasion. Let's see what you could talk him into. Yeah, you uh, get a great deal on it. What do you think that's worth? Tell me. I want. Didn't, that. didn't we commission a statue earlier? <laughs> that was. <laughs> you want them like uh, you want them like uh, around the door, yeah. like 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 human size. You want all five of you, or do you want them to be like dragons or heroes or what? I can like spread across like a bar table. Um, and his name is Solstratos, by the way. It's <laughs> Solstratos. I'd like him a little bigger than us, you know. So when we come in, it's kind of like, yeah, I can take a picture with it without like. Do you, Do you want yeah. them over the double doors where you are there and people come and they see you like your bust, or you want entire full statues? Entire full statues. Ah, yes, that might cost a bit of drachma. But for you, uh, heroes of the, the prophecy, uh, let me see here. Wow. Um, he says, how about uh, I do it for a bit of a, a favor? All free? Kind of favor. Well, I still need some uh, drachma for the materials, but if you could talk to Delphion and get me free drinks as well, then I'll do each statue for three drachma each. Yeah. I'll get you uh, drinks for free for the next month, for the next moon. There you go. Yeah. Give me a full moon and I'm sure I can come up with something. We'll talk to Delphion they... and have that arranged. They're going to have. It doesn't matter. Can can the four of us decide? Because we're gonna outpay him. So, uh, um, can it be in like bronze? Is that gonna cost a little extra? Uh, of course. I was thinking stone. Bronze will cost extra for certain. Let me get back to you. I'll start working on it. See uh, what the bronze prices are, and we'll see what we can come up with. Well, whatever the whatever the number is, I'm gonna pay it. But you screw me, you're done. Oh, of course not. You are my best customer. Oh, he made Bye. my he made my figure. Okay, my figure is very nice. Yeah, I just want us in bronze so people can't chip shit off of us. Like you know, I also need and... a new one now. Yeah, you bought most of his stone statues for uh, several hundred drachma, perhaps. 
Uh, bronze, it's probably going to be at least 100 drachma each. Well, you get working on it. I'm going to give him 100 drachma to start. And okay. And I'll uh, as uh, things are going. I'm so you know I feel like with how many DM games I've run I need a chart for how much to commission for statues it just seems to come up every time. <laughs> <laughs> well, stop having me in your game. <laughs> All right. Power of statues. Okay. So, do you guys ever leave Astoria? Yep, we grab our yeah. things, our companions. Yep. Okay. You see, I'm going to so, so the knights were to the south. Yes, they uh, hung out it. at the south gate. Um, there is a, a trail that kind of heads towards the necropolis, but it goes around it, and you can take the um, trail all the way to Mitros. There, I know the map doesn't Perfect. do a good, very good oh, job not, of trails. They're not flying. Oh, they're not flying you, no. They are escorting you. So they actually, as you start to travel along the road, they rise up and uh, kind of just watch you. And just because uh, I have it, I feel like we need to go to... Uh... Oh, yeah, I need to change... Shia correct? No. No. <laughs> No. I mean, good. Ashaya finally reverted after coming out to that south gate. Someone Back pointed out, too, form. that uh, her overlay in the stream is still her old version. Ah, that's fine. Hey, that's put fun, like though. A, put it like a black marker. That we've... <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> well, we'll see her transformation when her token's up. Uh, so, yes, you guys travel with three copper dragons drifting in the sky around you. And, um, and yeah, let's do a... Where'd my mouse go? Mousey. Um, a random guy. Yeah, uh, what are you guys talking about on the road? So you just had a really hungover night. You're feeling a little bit better now. I am talking all about... Uh, Sidon and different things about his electricity. Hmm. Yeah, you're getting I... more and more memories of what happened to the old Ashaya. Do you share that info with them? No, I just said that it was great to see him and that it was a sight that amazed a lot of things. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, whoever wants to take that on, feel free. Uh, uh, I'm good. <laughs> well, Kira's happy to do it. She tells you how when you guys left the judging contest, she slept for a little bit, and when she woke up, she heard the most amazing singer. She felt like she was essentially a muse of the goddess Kira, someone who uh, perhaps even the goddess herself in, in the child form. And she kind of snickers as she tells you this tale of this wonderful singer. That sounds great. I'm going to take my dragon egg out while we're walking just to make sure it's down. A lot of sunlight. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty nice day, and you feel that it's uh, looking healthy and warm. It's got these unique freckles on it. Um, and these little freckles. Yeah. What do you um, know? What does Zark know about dragon eggs? Has he ever taken care of one before? Absolutely not. Okay. Well, he's he's learned a little bit. From, um, from, yep. All I know is I gotta keep it warm in the sun, electricity. Yes. That's what I know. You also know that um, it could take anywhere from three to 18 days to hatch. Um, you know that 
from Aesop, you know that when it does get ready to hatch, if a prospective dragon lord wishes to bond with the dragon, Aesop told you you must be present and paying attention because when a newborn hatches, the first living thing that it sees it attaches to. So the dragon lord must be the first living creature that it sees. And as soon as you see that, it must cast the spell bond of the dragon lord or have someone else that can cast it, naming both the dragon lord and the dragon as targets. More than I knew. <laughs> In the meantime, while I'm carrying this, Solano. Yes. Uh, I'm going to, like, carry it in front of me, like, I'm gonna grab like a a blanket to like tie and like hold it in front of me while I'm walking. Okay. Uh, but I'm gonna look at Solano and be like, "All right, so we gotta start planning our future of uh, the the Dragon Tooth Inn because yes. we need that thing to start making some money. Yes. And us giving away things is not going to be making money. Yes. So." We need, at least that's why I commissioned statues. It might cost a couple bucks in the first place, but people see our notoriety. They should be coming in yes. more often. What, what kind of plans would you like to do? We need to have a, a diverse menu that offers food to many different clientele. I'm talking about the weaklings that don't eat meat and the weaklings that do eat meat. <laughs> What about the what about the mid to upper class? The what? The the middle class to upper class. We have cheap and expensive dishes then, which are just different name dishes with different ingredients ranged differently. Oh, so the same ingredients range differently. Same same ingredients, but fancier name. Yes, because yes, the rich want like the rich. This. Because the rich unintelligently spend their money on prestige. Mm -hmm. I, I like it. If you gave I a man a mountain of money, and rather than help out the people, he would choose to find a way to magically fly up from the planet, he would probably pick that option for the prestige. And also because he's an idiot. <clears throat> Jeff Bezos, anyways. So, everything's wrapped in gold. We just find, like, gold coloring. Yes. I like it. I mean, diverse menu for more clientele does bring in more clientele as well. Sure, yes, but for the upper echelon, we, we yes. find some gold coloring that we can add to the stuff to make it look like they're eating freaking gold. Yes. All right. So you guys I'm camp for the night. You're talking about business. Things seem to go well. The, the dragons and the knights camp a little bit a ways off. Because um, they think we're peasants. How dare they? <laughs> we, will be the, we will be the higher echelon soon. Why don't you roll insight, <laughs> Solano Dale? Sure. Or maybe they're scared of us because we're going to be fucking dragon lords. Yeah. Oh, wait. You're still exhausted. Hold on. Try. Oh, it doesn't matter. You rolled really well. Um... So, yeah, you're trying to get a sense of them, and they do seem standoffish, but it's not as if looking down on you or even scared. It looks oh. to be a sign of respect. Oh, okay, cool. But you also think they might be hiding something. Yeah. <laughs> you know, everyone's got another agenda. You know, it's the way the world works, unfortunately. You look up at the stars, and Kira points out constellations once again. You guys know my wife visited me today, town. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did she? Yeah, she? She was not happy. Mm. She wasn't. No, she was not. She was rightfully not happy. I mean, if you were committed to someone and you're like, "Oh, gonna fuck this person," <laughs> even though I was totally messed up from Luferia, you'd be mad too. But I was able to talk to her and explain what happened, and she didn't kill Phoebe because Phoebe helped us with our problems. That's good. You mean just, thought you guys, just thought I'd let you guys know. So I saw Zark kind of curious about the situation. But Zark, you I, are a good friend. You, I'm sure you were just looking out for me in my best interests. I didn't want you to be killed. Yeah, I was kind of worried too. Well, I told you <laughs> it might happen. 
I told you it might happen. Yes, you did. But it did not happen, thankfully. But I was ready because you had mentioned it. I don't know how long she'll hold off for. But... Um, probably. <laughs> we'll see. She, she did She did say we have to save the world or Thylea will burn. And it's mm. mercy. So... Be any time. that with extreme prejudice. Mm -hmm. So during the camping night, you do hear... Uh, you do hear Pythor and Kira arguing, uh, and you catch sort of a glimpse of the argument where Pythor is saying, you know, just tell him, and Kira seems like, no, if I tell him, he'll be disappointed. And they seem to be talking about uh, Vulcan being the him in question, and the topic is of her losing her musical instruments. Hey, we're supposed to find those things. Oh, yeah, we are. Okay. Oh, well, we found one. Which Kira. Yes. How much do you like Vulcan as a person? Oh, I respect him completely. I hope that he respects me. Why? So here's the thing. Um, did Vulcan help make your instruments? help i would say he was the only one who made my instruments and I've... so here's the thing <sighs> we're, we're trying to help you find your instruments right yeah and why do you want your instruments back well you see they're quite powerful not just musically but but what pythor and i were talking about around the fire is uh, they were made by Vulcan for me, and I don't want to disappoint him and tell him I lost them. Well, well, we have one at least. All I can tell you is if that conversation ever comes up, you have the ability to make a choice to tell him the truth or not. What I can, what I can recommend is by being front and honest with him, and explaining your wrong, the wrongdoing that has occurred, the accident, if you will, and the fact that we are working together in tandem to get these instruments back because how much you appreciate them. But I do not think he will be as mad. If I just have them, then I won't even have to explain it. And some of them are exactly. so powerful. Some of them are so powerful they could control the weather. And I Wait. would love to just not tell him that I need him to remake well, that or something. Well, listen. Well, listen. We are don't want him to make the, another one. Are those magical powers well known to people, like regular people? Uh, I would say no. I would say then that... Then I wouldn't be so worried about it. Okay. you know where the other ones are? I know we found one of them off a dead satyr. Yeah, they... Um, Weren't I, they stolen from where you were staying in Astoria? Uh, actually, they were stolen from the my place in temple. Mitros. Yeah, at the Temple of the Five uh, is a temple in Mitros where we're headed, and so we'll I got I got word that they were stolen from the temple. So, well, we're gonna have to go figure some shit out at the temple then. Yeah, we okay. killed the uh... heck was the guy's name. No reason to worry yet. We're on this. So uh, you see the city of Mitros in the distance. And a curious glint in the sky draws your attention upward. Ahead of you are a group of six metallic birds circling what seemed to be the remains of a centaur up the road a bit. The creatures take turns diving down to rend and pull at the flesh chunks, the fresh chunks of its flesh with their cruel bronze beaks. And how you deal with that is where we will pick off next time on Odyssey of the Dragon Lords.